The views expressed are solely those of the individuals providing them, and do not reflect the opinions of the Team Sakpase podcast or their respective affiliates or sponsors. This episode is sponsored by LS Cream, the perfect blend of spices and tradition inspired by Haitian cremas. Please drink responsibly. Sack Passe, what's up? We're back at the Bath Path to Prosperity Conference with our brother, Mr. Ernest Moss. How you doing, brother? Man, I'm incredible, brother. How about you? Doing good. Let the people know what you're talking about today. We're talking about success. Everybody needs to up their success game and their blueprint. And a mm-hmm. lot of the speakers are going to talk about business plays and what they can do. But what I'm going to talk about is what they can do in the bed and at home. Oh, okay. Right, right. okay. 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 That's a that trip. A, All right. A, it's a little different. It's a, a little different. different. A little different. That's, that's me though. Give, give us a little nugget though. Yeah. So one of the little nuggets is people don't realize that just a simple smile would change your entire body chemistry. You can do blood work when you're upset compared mm-hmm. to when you're happy and mm-hmm. your blood work is different. So when you wake up every morning and you're thinking about, man, I got to get in traffic. I got to do this. I got to do that. Wake up in the morning smiling. Mm. And you hold that for 30 minutes to a, on, to 30 seconds to a minute and your whole chemistry changes for the entire day. Wow. It's a simple yeah. hack that awesome. a lot of people don't realize. But Tupac said it best with face. Smile for me. Got wow. You. That Got is you. true, man. Let's talk about this T-shirt now. You said it's WTF. Now, we all know WTF. <laughs> <laughs> but you got it. You know, what's so the formula? We play on. Me, I deal with teenage young men, and mm. they like acronyms, and they like to play on them. So we have, what's the formula? So originally, you would think, what the? Right. No, we want you to think, what's the formula? Because everything has a formula mm-hmm. but to be successful. Mm-hmm. There's a formula for that. There's a formula to lose weight. There's a formula to get money. There's formulas to everything we do. So whenever we run into anything, we think, what is the formula? And also, the WTF means winning takes focus. So it's mm. just a play on the acronym. That's powerful. what's up, man. That is powerful. One last question for you. What's your path to prosperity? My path to prosperity is to impact everybody that can hear the sound of my voice. Powerful. Wow. Powerful. Let people know where they could check you out for more information. Go look us up. It's the WTF Men's Academy. It's that big egg. You'll see me out there. The Fat Joe looking good. But I'm the better looking version, so don't <laughs> keep saying I look like Fat Joe. He wish he looked like this. But you'll see me out there, and you'll feel the energy, I promise. That's right, what's up. We're, we're with the one and only Mr. David Power Talk. What's up, bro? What's going on, fellas? How y'all yeah. doing? Good to see y'all yeah, again. Good to see you oh, again, again, right? Yep, yep, yeah, I love yep. it. Back at it. You just yes. tore down that stage, bro. Thank you, man. Tore it we, down, for real. We saw that picture of that amazing story you had you gotta let us know what you talked about today yeah so today i really talked about stop focusing on things you can't control right because i was in a car accident i almost lost my life and it made me realize that god chose me for a reason and a lot of us in life we also focus on things we can't control it's messing up your now and you can't get to your next Mm -hmm. so i had to give that message in a way that can be relatable to everybody. So I just want to say everybody out there, just remember how powerful you are. You're unique. You're amazing. Don't allow things you can't control to control you. Powerful. Wow, wow. That's dope, man. Like yeah. that energy that you had, what kind of feeling were you going through like on stage? <laughs> right. I was watching you in the corner. I was like, damn, yeah. look at this dude right here. Right. You know what's so crazy? Um, <laughs> it's like a superhero, right? Mm-hmm. When I hit the stage, I can't even explain it. Because I never memorize anything. I know the framework, what I want to talk about. Mm-hmm. But everything else is just me and God. Like, it's just, that's why I'm blessed to have this gift. Like, I don't take it for granted. Gotcha. Like, literally, I'm probably on about three hours of sleep. I literally popped up three in the morning just looking over some notes, like speaker notes about mm-hmm. things I want to talk about. Like, Matthew 27, I talked about that. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, you know, connecting the dots with the message. Mm-hmm. And any speakers watching this right now, your preparation is key, right? Mm-hmm. And it's not all about trying to memorize your keynote. It's really about understanding how you want to deliver your message. It's the small things that you do here and there to make the whole message great. Remember, I brought the chair out. Mm-hmm. I gave out T-shirts. Mm-hmm. I had an intro video. I had slides, right? These, some people just think they got to come up and just speak. That's good. I could do that too. But I know I'm in an environment. I got to have clear separation from all the other speakers. So my clear separation is the little small things I did. Here's a question for you. 
sometimes you give people the message, but they don't take it and act on it. And sometimes right. it's because of past issues. Right. Can you talk about how important mental health is mm. with um, the information that you provide? Yes. Um, great. That's a great question. Mental health is very important. I'm big on mental health because I've been through anxiety. I've been through depression. I've been through suicidal thoughts more than once. So I understand how your mind can play tricks on you. I understand, yes, God know your plans, but the devil know your plans also too. And he attacks your mind first because he knows if he can control your mind, you can't do nothing else. So I want to say anybody out there, just take it one day at a time and just remember this. If you woke up this morning, you got the best gift. You got life. Now what do you do? Opportunity. Mm -hmm. So you can't control what happened yesterday. So we so focus on what happened or what could happen, we never live in the moment. So I told myself, take my phone, take this. I need to live in the moment while I'm on stage. I need to give them everything I got and be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So any speakers out there, be vulnerable, be transparent. Like, tell them, I lost everything. Tell them, I got daddy issues, I got mama issues, whatever it is. Because there's somebody in the audience gonna be sitting there be like, that's me too. Perfect. Wow. Before you get out of here. Yeah. 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 Before you get out of here, I was gonna. <laughs> yep. What's your path to prosperity? Ooh, my path to prosperity right now is just living in a higher purpose to change other people's lives. Because the more lives I change, God is gonna bless me, bless me with other things. Like I said on the stage, I've been, I've done so much in my life, right? Mm -hmm. That I already know that it's already mapped out for me to do more. So I'm not worried about, am I going to reach another million or, or do this or do that? It's going to happen regardless because as long as I get up every day and I tackle my purpose, like I just had a mastermind, I have a, over a hundred some people in the room. I had almost the same amount of people that's here right now mm -hmm. in my own mastermind. Mm -hmm. Somebody that almost gave up on life. Mm -hmm. But why would God bless me with something like that and then stop right there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us right now, you got a blessing right now, and you think your blessing is going to stop right now. It's not going to stop right now. It's more coming. Mm -hmm. If you believe more, it's coming. That's why I talked yeah. about how God cracked the earth open, and he raised up the dead, the holy people, because they had so much faith in him and God that he brought them back to life. But sometimes we feel like we're dead because we're dealing with anxiety, we're dealing with doubt, we're dealing with fear, we're dealing with past trauma, and we feel like we can't make it. But you allow God to operate in faith and pull you out that crack. I'm telling you, you're going to have a whole different lifestyle ahead of you. Mm, just have some church in the building. I don't know. Yeah, my I'm bad. Not, I'm <laughs> bad. I know I went on a little powerful. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Yeah, hey, y'all yeah. felt the energy? I know I did. Right, right, right. <laughs> that was, right, that was right. chill, very, right, right. very chilling. Let the people know where they can find you on, on IG. IG, TikTok, website, everything is at David Power Talk. At David Power Talk, all one word. You guys, come check me out. Come follow me. Listen, I drop stuff every day, every day. Um, I'm a motivational speaker. I help you to become a motivational speaker. And I help you to grow your content as an influencer, as an entrepreneur, because I know that you can no longer be the best kept secret. Sakpase, Saka Fet, New York. Nah, it's all good. We live with our brother One or Three from the Path of Prosperity, Mr. Ash Cash. Talk to them about it, brother. Yo, man, this is powerful, man. I think you know, for me, uh, number one, we, last year we went crazy. We did it. We did it the best we could. Um, and then you know, what I mean, just like the '96 Bulls, back to back. Mm. You know, what I'm saying we said, all right, we got to keep that that same impact. And so we made sure that we, you know, we were gonna give the give impact. We made the room intimate. Um, it's a bunch of, you know, we increased the prices so we could weed out the people who just want to see, you know, because sometimes people pay to see you fail. Don't miss that, mm. right? And so we increased the prices to make sure anybody in the room is serious about their success. And it fills my heart to understand that God is using my life. Right. Because if I never showed up, if I never said yes, if Storm didn't say yes and Bobbin didn't say yes, we wouldn't be in this beautiful location with, with, with hundreds of people teaching them how to get on their path to prosperity, showing them how to get to the next level, showing them how to make, manage and multiply money. So it's a great feeling. Um, I, I'm, just, I'm just happy to be here. You know? nah, that's what's up, man. So last year you guys did Path to Prosperity in Brooklyn. Uh, we did, did it in, uh, uh, in, in, in Miami. 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 Yep. This year in Atlanta. Yep. So where's the next... Man, I, I I don't know. You know, I think I think that for us, um, it's really just just uh, allowing our intuition to guide us. Because when we did it last year, our goal was to continue to do it in Miami. Uh, but what we realized is that you know a lot of our home base is in Atlanta. Atlanta is a is a place where uh, you know it's easy it's easier to get to. So that's why we decided to do it in Atlanta. Um, who knows? It, it might be in Atlanta next year. It might be in New York. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? It's really about. Um, that's the one thing about us that I, I really appreciate um, is that, you know, they say they say make a plan. God laughs at your plans. 
It's really about, you know, uh, you know, being intuitively guided and just going in the direction that God has taken us. So, I, so uh, I, you know, I don't have the answer yet, but wherever it's going to be, it's going to be impactful. It's going to change lives and it's going to help people get to the next level in their life. What's one of the main messages, takeaways that you want the audience to take? Yeah. I, so 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 uh, AC, right? AC, everything. Ash Cash, Abundance Community. The two things, accountability um, and, and, and accountability and confidence, right? Because what people think is that they're uh, coming here for information. They're not coming here for information. They're coming here to be held accountable. They're coming here to now gain the confidence. That I, like, like every speaker that we, we, we perfectly chose, we, ch we didn't choose people that were born with silver spoons in their mouth. We didn't choose people who had these great stories. We have people who, you know, almost lost their lives. We have people who did time in jail. We have people who, you know, we have all of these, these comeback stories because guess what? We're all made in the image and likeness of God, right? So we are G O D, little G. We are greatness on display. How can you display that greatness if you ain't never been through nothing? Right. Yeah. And so we have carefully crafted, you know, you know, the people that we are around, the people that we're building with so that people in the audience can see that ACT action changes things. Right. Mm -hmm. That they that the people on stage are there because they took action. And we want people to take away that. Listen, you need accountability. You need to be held accountable to yourself. and You need to find people to hold you accountable. And you also need the confidence. Right. And so if you don't have the confidence, borrow my belief. Because I know you could be doing, have anything you desire. So borrow my belief. And that's what, that's the two things I want people to uh, take away. Nice, powerful, nice, powerful. Nice, nice, yeah. So Rob, ask him to ask the magical question. Yes, so, yes. What's your path to prosperity? Man, my path to prosperity is multiple streams of income. You know, uh, one, one of the things that, um, you know, I realize is books, uh, you live forever, right? Whenever God says, Ash Cash, you did good, and he takes me off of this earth physically, I live forever. I will never die. Why? Because I have written 14 books and they're going to live forever. Napoleon Hill died in the 70s, right? Over 50 years ago, but we still talk about that man every single day. My man wrote uh, Think and Grow Rich 84 years ago, and it's still a number one bestseller on Amazon. Mm. And so I realized that every single person who has wealth and wants to create a legacy and wants their name to live past their name or past their physical physicalness, they have done it through books. And so my path to prosperity is creating multiple streams of income through books and making sure that my, my, my name lives forever. Wow, 14 Amen. books. Yes, sir. Right. Just the beginning. Congrats, hey, brother. Y'all already know where to find them, but just in case somebody's living under a rock, let them know. Yo, you can catch me. Go to my website, imashcash.com. Follow me on all social media platforms at imashcash. Make sure you check out Inside the Vault, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. Go to insidethevaulttv.com. And listen, you with my brothers, Team Sock Passe, New La, Haiti. We in the building. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The first, the number one free republic ever. You know what I'm saying? So, so put some respect on our name. The richest country on the Western Hemisphere. Let's go. Hey. That's a great, you know, great you know, What's up, y'all? We're back at the Path to Prosperity Conference, and we're here with our brother, Mr. Herman Dulcey. Appreciate you guys catching yeah. me everywhere, man. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. yes. It's good to be back. It's good to be back, man. I think there's a third time on the podcast. Third time yes, on the yes. podcast. Yes. I love yeah. it. I love it. Uh, I don't even know what else to ask you anymore. Oh, I know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> what's the number one thing after you teaching your students all of the methods of credit, and you say to them, you still haven't learned this, or you still haven't executed this yet? What what is it? Is it the address? Is it um, the one eight hundred number that they have? They don't have like what is it that they need to get to the next level of funding? Listen, you actually gave the answer. Mm. Execution, wow. right? So the information that we give, bro, they can find it online. They can mm. find it in the courses. Mm -hmm. They can find it from any other Instagram influencer. Mm -hmm. It's all about the execution. We buy these exercise videos. We buy these. Um, oh, let me let learn how to cook. But nobody presses play to watch mm. it. Right. Mm -hmm. We have a bunch of smart pads, a bunch of notebooks full of potential, but nobody ever execute the information. We set our alarm at five o'clock, but we press Zoom 10 times and it's six o'clock and we got to go to work. Nobody ever execute. You need the business address. You need the business phone number. You need the website. You need the good credit. You need the, to know the, the data points to put on the application, but no one ever presses play. So that's the one thing everybody's missing is the actual execution of the information that has been taught to you a hundred times. Wow. Mm. Come on, how many yeah. how many real yeah. estate conferences are there? Yeah. But there's still a bunch of abandoned houses all over the country. That's true. Like that's with true. all the plays I was given, man, half of them should be gone by now. 
That is true. That is, that true. is true. That, that is, is true. true. So Haitian CEO brand, the, the name, like where do you see yourself in uh, five years from now? Uh, in five years from now, what we're working on right now is actually, and I just got off, I just watched Ash get off stage and talk about this, yeah. is actually um, using the information to teach the other people so that they can franchise the Haitian CEO um, blueprint on execution for getting your business funded. So that's what my team is working on right now. Nice. So get it into colleges, get it into high schools to execute and blow it all up. Very right. nice. Very Can nice. you talk a little bit about data points? Data points. Data points on your credit is super important when you're trying to get funded. All right. Mm -hmm. um, I always say minimum 680, but we're, we're doing maximum. So maximum, I want you to be at least at 700 credit score, two credit cards over two years old, $2,500 limits, low usage, low inquiries. Then you're looking at getting 50 to 100,000 every single time. So the higher your credit score, the older your credit cards, the higher the limits on the personal side, they're going to bless you on the business side. Very nice. Oh, cool. Very good. Your path to prosperity. What is your path to prosperity? My path to prosperity is ensuring my, my circle is audited, that I have a bunch of mentors around me that are where I want to go, not where I am right now. Wow, that's deep. Some... Yeah, you got Wait, that got nuggets. Man. Nah, I wrote the stuff down. Drop, I wrote, I wrote the stuff. I wrote the stuff down already. He's dropping like <laughs> audit your circle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Success has receipts. Success has receipts. What's another one? Is uh, assets, only. Assets, assets only. Assets only. Yeah. What's Execution? next? Execution. I don't know. Execute. Yeah, Execute. I don't know. Uh, that'll be the title of my next book coming soon. Powerful <laughs> man. Hey, let them know where they can find you. Listen, you can find me Haitian underscore CEO on all platforms. I would love to be a service. Talk to you guys soon. Everybody, we're back at the Path to Prosperity Conference with Miss Linda Clemens. How are you doing? Oh, I'm blessed by the best. Thank you for oh, asking. Oh, man. You tore down that stage. Oh, you man. owned that stage, yeah. I heard. You owned it. You, you know definitely what? owned it. Great energy, great purpose, and I felt it. I felt the room. Let the people know what you spoke about today. Oh, so I travel around the world. I'm a sales and body language expert. So I was giving them strategies on what they need to do to be powerful in their presence, in their persuasiveness, and we had fun with it. You know, rather than just give uh, data Data that can be boring. I did it in a way that, if you will, edutaining, because when you use mm. edutainment, educate and have fun with it, the brain remembers it longer. It holds True. up to it. Nice. Wow. So I was looking at it and I was just like, wow, this is the first time I've ever seen someone like your nonverbal communicator. How long have you been doing this? Okay, so I know everyone that's listening and watching, they think, oh my God, I thought that was Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I thought she was like in her 30s, but I've been doing this for over four decades. Wow. Okay, four decades. And you notice I said decades instead of years. Same thing, but the word decade, you know, gives it more authority and mm. power, you know? So that's why I said that. Before, for 40 years, for a long time. So the one of the oldest out there in the game and one that looked like me, if you will. But I think the thing that gives me the edge, because I've had FBI agents refer me to television interviews and I have other people refer. I think the thing that gives me the foundation is not just the science of reading the nonverbal communication. It is having the anointing as the foundation mm. of it. Mm. So when I, you start off as an empty vessel and when I'm in your presence, my brother, and I'm in your presence, and if we're having a communication as we are with the audience, you want to be a hundred percent present in someone's presence. Wow. And Chills. when you're that way, you could see so many things. You could see the facial expressions and the movements and the nuances, and it's so critical. Wow. wow. Tell, I was just quickly, as a, as a as an entrepreneur, tell the people how important business posture is. Absolutely. So as an entrepreneur, I've been an entrepreneur for quite a few years, over, over 30 years officially, with my company being a S corporation. And how important it is, because as an entrepreneur, you are giving your life. I think it was Robert Kiyosaki that said in his book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, in order for the entrepreneur to emerge, the employee must die. Wow. See, because it's just like the Bible says, you can't serve two gods. So you're either going to give it 100%. You can't have like, you know, there's some parts of the world where people have multiple wives, multiple spouses. Right, right, right. But my granny would say, baby, you can only drive one car at one time. Mm. So, so, so giving wow. it that 100% energy at that time. Now, what I do with every one of my clients, I uh, have a philosophy. All of my business has been based off the three R's, reputation, referrals, and repeat business. Mm. You know, Walt Disney says, do what you do so well. Walt Disney said, do what you do so well that people will go out and tell other people. Mm. So I have people that become raving fans and evangelists because of what you do. And that's important. So as an entrepreneur, think of the song of the temptations, the line, it's the way you do the things that you do. Mm.
Wow. Smooth. Beyonce killing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one last question. What is your path to prosperity? My path to prosperity, I'm a giver. So I sow in the areas that I want to see grow. I invest in myself, in self-improvement, and I invest in others. I plant seeds. So when you plant good seeds in good soil, then that will grow. And the law of the universe and the law of reciprocity, what it gives, it can come back tenfold. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's my secret. Wow. You Let, feel the energy, Glad? Chills. I feel can you feel the power? So are, yeah. we, are we standing well? Like, y'all doing, doing good. Oh, yeah, y'all taking up real estate, baby. You see, okay. I'm hanging in there with me. I got okay. my property, too, with <laughs> me. I know I'm, I'm, you know, yes. I'm a big guy. You know, he's so... He's, we, I can you, handle you it. Good. I can handle it. All right, all right. All right. Cool. <laughs> I just want to make sure. Let people know where they can find you for more information. Listen, follow... Uh, this, thank you, because my niece will get on me, okay? <laughs> Hit me up on uh, Instagram, at Linda Clemens, and my website, my name, Clemens with one M. It's kind of like the word limits with the C in front of it, Clemens. Mm -hmm. And uh, and my name is a registered trademark. Why is that important? So just like Coca Cola Delta, because my name is my brand. Mm. Okay. So I thank you so much. Sat Passe. What's up? What's up? Yeah, we're back at the Path to Prosperity Conference with one and the other. Well, one of three, Mr. Storm Leroy. What's up, brother? Hey, I appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all, man. It's appreciate an honor. you too. It's a blessing to be here right now. Oh man, you just tore down that stage, man. Yeah. With one foot. We'll yeah. talk about that later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> Let yeah, the yeah. people know, man. Uh, this this is a hell of an event. Um, this message I gave today, I definitely want you guys to go back and watch it. Those who haven't seen it, it's a heavy message, heavy, heavy on my heart. Um, you know, we're at DEF CON level one as a people. We really think we have all this time to figure it out and go invest and buy real estate. When my message was about, if you look back 50 years ago, a loaf of bread was 25 cents. Now it's literally $2.50. The average home was $38,000 $38, and now it's $450,000 50 years. 50 years into the future is where I went. Your great grandchildren may never be able to afford a house. Mm -hmm. The cornerstone of investing, equity, HELOCs, pay for colleges, Weddings handed down. Your grandchildren will be forever renters in a country that wants to make them a renter and a robot or homeless. I want you to look around into your neighborhoods. Look around into the cities. L.A., New York, Atlanta. It's the walking dead for a reason. They're giving hundreds of billions of dollars to other countries, other nations, but telling you they have none for you. But they're bringing in people who they want you to hate because they are the new working class. What are you doing? What are you waiting for? So what do we do? Get a mentor. Get into the room with people who are doing things. Don't just get into a room. Get around like-minded people. People who you know understand that we're at DEF CON 1 and we need to do something. Use the power of group economics to build. As much as we've destroyed, it's now to build. Everybody's not going to make it. Leave them behind. Let them turn into a pillar of salt. But if you do nothing, your great, great grandchildren will look back and ask a question. You mean homes used to be 400,000 and now they're 2 million, 3 million? What, what was my grandparents doing? Why didn't they buy one? Why am I homeless? You mean we used to own a home, but they sold it and did nothing with the money? It's never a problem with selling grandmama's house. It's the lack of knowledge when selling grandmama house is the problem. So I'm kind of done at this point. Y'all got to forget. <laughs> wow. No, so man. It's oh. like midday right now. Six hours ago, 6 a.m., 5 a.m. Yeah. What was going through your mind before you got on that stage, before this started? I knew that I had to get this out because my chest was hurting. Mm. Mm. Yeah, my oh. chest was hurting. I tell, I tell everybody, I can't talk about it because I'll fall apart. Because I know what's going to happen. I know I'm a visionary. Mm. I know what could happen, and I know what could be great. And if I don't say it, who will? For, the, for those that don't have much within the next three to six months, what can they do right now? If they can't afford to get in the room, what can they do right now to change their financial situation? Start watching these videos. Start watching other people you inspire to be. Start saving your money. 
I don't believe in not having money if you have a job. The job is your first business partner. It's literally paying you, but you're paying bills and not paying into your future. I took $8,000 and accumulated that to almost $3 million in five years in out-of-state real estate that I never went to go see, touch, or manage. What was your excuse? Don't tell me you got to, we're going to go vacation and you saving all year to go on a vacation. We're going to have a baby's party, a one-year or two-year-old party. You know, that's for y'all. That's an adult's party. Y'all want to ball out of alcohol, music all night. That has to stop. Literally. Don't stop hanging around those people. Change and they wouldn't even want to hang around you. Mm. So I'm at the point where I want to teach you everything. But first, I have to show you belief, and I have to tell you what the outcome will be if you do nothing. Why do you think the story of the Holocaust resonates with the Jewish people so much, and they get out there and work so hard? Because somebody is doing the same thing I'm doing. Sit them down and tell them what has happened and what will be if you don't go out there and do something. Mm. Powerful. What? One big challenge putting Path to Prosperity Conference this weekend. One, just give us one big challenge that you have. You and the team. Staying together. Mm. Path to prosperity is great. The hardest part is staying together mm. because we want to move this ship. But there's directions where I know other people need to become us. Other people need to rise up in the ranks so I don't have to be on stage. Marv don't have to be on stage. Ash don't have to be. A, we have to impact the world. And we can't do that by being at every conference, talking on video calls with our mentees. Come up in the ranks and let us go across the world and give our people this message. So that's the hardest part of realizing we can't stay together, but we're going to put other people in place of us. That's all. It's really hard for me not to do this on stage because I know they need to hear it, but I need to create a better way of communicating this to people that I need another Storm. We need another Ash. We need another Marvin Mitchell. Where are you? What are you waiting for? Mm. Mm. And you said on stage today that you wasn't gonna let your injury stop you from sharing that message. Yeah, the, the universe let me know that I have your future so much in mind, I'm gonna tell you, you're going to be on stage with a boot and there's nothing you can do about it. Mm. You know, people ask me, oh, what if you didn't go play ball? I told them, it don't matter. The universe knew that my drive and my passion is so strong that I would play ball. Mm. The universe showed me I will travel the world, make billions of dollars because I needed to move the world. Not for me. The universe showed me and told me that. Mm. So now what am I supposed to do, run away from it? Even if I tried to run away, it would still haunt me. Even if I tried not to play ball, I would have probably slipped off a curb. The goal was the universe said, I'm going to have you in a boot. The universe said, I'm going to have you travel in the world. Who am I to deny the universe? So when people say, all you had to do is not play, I say, they don't understand the power of the universe. Mm. <laughs> your path to prosperity. What is your path to prosperity? Well, my path to prosperity is being able to do what I do in every country, every language, and I want to look into the eyes of the next person who realize this needs to be told cinematically, books, a document, uh, was a documentary. Like, I want the person to realize they need to be that last person from the movie 300s. He said, no, you don't fight war. Go tell the story. Mm. I want to find mm. that person who is going to tell the story. Give me chills. It's now. What's up? Storm Leroy. If Storm. they don't know, just let them know where they can find you. I am Storm Leroy on Instagram. I just Google me. <laughs> <laughs> Respectfully. 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 <laughs> From Brooklyn. Appreciate you guys. Oh, appreciate you. Uh, we're here with our brother. Introduce yourself to the world, my brother. Uh, my name is John Thomas. All right. Talk to us about the 411 brand. Uh, the 411 brand is a youth development agency that started uh, 30 years ago as a way to bridge the gap between successful people and young people that want to be successful in the areas of, excuse me, education, athletics, and entertainment. Hmm. Okay. Powerful. Where's your? Where are you based out of? We're based here in Atlanta. Oh, here in Atlanta. Yeah. How long have you been doing this? Uh, since '93. Since '93. Yeah. Talk to us wow. about the importance of uh, setting up an uh, organization like this. 
Well, um, growing up, there was always a saying that you should be who you would want when you were a kid. So coming up, creating programming, and young people don't have a whole lot of outlets. Mm -hmm. um, also creating something different than just school, tapping into what their interests are. So we offer film, music, basketball, lacrosse, all the other components outside of education mm. um, that goes on inside the school system. Uh, yeah. Oh. yeah, just keep the mic closer. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. What, was there like a trigger moment for you? Like what was that moment for you to say, you know what? I need to start the, an organization like this as, as grow, before you started it. Um, honestly, I grew up playing basketball. I played Division One basketball. The mm -hmm. goal was to play professionally. Mm -hmm. um, invited to the NBA Summer League. And then mm -hmm. it was at that moment I realized basketball wasn't, I didn't want to do it for a profession. I was around guys that had families and things like that. And I just didn't have that passion mm -hmm. to keep pushing like that because now it's really a job. So it was at that moment I knew I had to pivot. I graduated from Sanford University with a journalism degree. Mm. Um, so I wanted to get into television. This was around Oprah, Ricky Lake, mm. those type shows. Okay. So we, we created a show where we brought celebrities with young people and they kind of talked how they became who they were. So um, it was from that moment that I realized that we need to create a platform to give young people an outlet instead of um, whatever is offered inside the school system. Gotcha. What are, um, what's the biggest challenge when working with this younger generation? I don't, I don't really see it more as a challenge. I think we all need to be fluid. I think we can't take how we grew up and impose that on young people today. Mm -hmm. I think we need to kind of step back and give them a little playground, mm -hmm. but then give them some guardrails and some structure. Mm -hmm. So I don't really see it as a challenge. I think it's more um, an intention and dealing with young people and what you want the result to be when you're mm -hmm. actually working with them. Okay. How big is your staff right now? Um, I have a staff of maybe 15 to 20. Wow. Yeah. That's so awesome. we have 17 programs throughout the uh, metro Atlanta. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but now we're targeting into Saturday school mm -hmm. where we have programs all over the city, but it's very difficult between that three and six mm -hmm. time during the week mm -hmm. because of traffic, parents, mm -hmm. outside activities at school. But on Saturdays now, it has to be intentional. You have to want to get up on a Saturday. Parents have to get up and bring you. So it's more, we have better results and mm -hmm. more intention when kids are a part of programming. Sometimes when you're doing after school programming, parents get off work, they want to come grab their kids and go. Mm -hmm. But we might not be finished with programming then. So it affects outcomes. So now creating a Saturday school where we take all of our programs, put them under one space, kids can come in and choose what they want to do for the semester. Nice. Definitely yeah, making nice. a difference. Talk to, about, talk to us about what you're going to be talking about on stage today. Well, actually, we're being honored for our 30 years. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Congratulations. Yeah, so, yeah I appreciate Congratulations. that. So, yeah, Ash gave us a call and um, said they wanted to honor us uh, for doing this work. So we, you know, we showed up. Absolutely. Hey, you're just getting started. Yeah. Let the people know what is your path to prosperity. Um, a path to prosperity, I think it's really relationships mm -hmm. as well as um, intention. Um, I think when you get up every day, there has to be a specific place that you're moving to. Um, but then also you're surrounded by a group of people who want to see you win, who's smarter than you and can pour into you. Mm -hmm. So I think that helps um, create your path to prosperity. Powerful. Very nice. Powerful. Very nice. Um, let people know where they could check you out on social media. Um, everything at the 411 brand, um, dot com and on social media is the 411 brand as well. All right. Appreciate it, man. You heard it first. You, man. Introduce yourself to the people. What's going on, people? I am Cece, Cece the coach. I help student athletes win the money game. I am a Path to Prosperity alumni, and we're here to set this thing off. Mm -hmm. Hey, you just tore down that stage. Let them know what you just spoke about. Listen, I had some of the parents up in there shaking because I teach financial literacy to, to uh, student athletes and their families. So I was in there talking about the education system and how we got to grab hold of our kids and we got to start teaching them. Even if you don't know much, still teach them what you know about financial literacy because you're either going to pay now or you're going to pay later. Okay, so you want to go ahead and spend invest in them and, and spend your time in them now. Uh, I gave them some apps that they can use uh, to be able to teach the kids financial literacy, budgeting, and things like that. Um, and then we, uh, I had to joke on, I had to joke on my people a little bit too. So, <laughs> so we kind of did that as well. Uh, introduced my ebook, uh, Pay Now and Pay Later, uh, why parents are the real culprits of the financial illiteracy crisis mm. that made them hurt. But I needed to make it hurt uh, so that we can step up and we can cut the silence out on financial literacy. Oh, wow. That's great. That's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah. So what are some of the common questions that these parents ask you about the financial, you know, bringing the students in? 
Uh, one of the main questions that they ask me now is, uh, if y'all know student athletes can make money off their name, image, and likeness. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, it's been going on for two years. A lot of people don't even know that yet. Mm -hmm. So I'm here because I was a student athlete. I was a baller and I played ball. And man, we struggle. Like uh, having to play ball, don't have time to work. The parents, you know, working, missing the games because they're working and all. So students, uh, so they always ask me, what is NIL and how can I benefit from my NIL? So I always, I'll, I give them advice on, people think it's just the big NIL deals that you can get but your neighborhood and your uh, businesses that's in locally you can get uh, in ideal in deals with them as well if it's just for the student posting on social media wearing your business just coming to your restaurant or something and posting in that so a lot of people think oh they got to get these grand deals but I tell them no you can you can you can you can make money you can uh, a kid can actually go to uh, have a camp and they can use their name to make money from that camp Mm -hmm. as well so a lot of people don't know that so a lot of people ask me how can i benefit from nil and so mm -hmm. I, I help them with that as well nice, nice. do you okay. believe uh financial literacy will ever be taught in the schools uh guess what it's already been taught in schools uh we it's about 14 schools now that is now mandatory to have a semester of financial literacy before they can even graduate. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but the issue is that we have with that is they're putting this course on some teachers that are not qualified to teach it. Okay. So I've created a curriculum that, uh, that the teachers can just facilitate it. Okay. They facilitate it. And then the kids can be able to learn financial literacy through simulations and games and things like that as well. Uh, so I think it's slowly getting there, but if people realize, man, the core classes, I get it. You want to learn mm -hmm. the history, the baths, you want to learn that stuff. But the number one thing that these kids are going to be using is financial literacy. That should be a core class. Right, right. So we need to, it, but the thing is parents are blaming it on the schools. Y'all not teaching my kids financial literacy. But what are you teaching them at home? Mm, 100%. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 100%. No, it's, it's like saying, uh, you know, uh, you, you teach an entrepreneur how to be an entrepreneur, but you're not an entrepreneur yourself. Like, how does that? Ooh, <laughs> hey, listen, I had a student. I had a student. He came to class. He was like, Coach Clark. He was like, should I go to this business school? But the, the business, the teacher never had a business. I was like, ooh, y'all learning. Y'all learning. Y'all learning. But, you know, uh, anyway, they do have that. They teach the theory uh -huh. and the concepts. Um, and a lot of times in the high schools, they teach it because they have no other choice but to teach it. Okay, mm -hmm. but on a college level, there's a choice there. So you, if your teacher's never been an entrepreneur, I'm sorry, you may want to switch schools. Do your research. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do your research. Gotcha. Final question for you. What, what's your path to prosperity? My path to prosperity, it's been a year, it's been over a year. My path to prosperity, man, let me tell you, it's beautiful, it's mine, it's personal. And if I'm winning, everybody, everybody around me is going to win. If I don't have everybody around me winning, I don't have prosperity. Mm. Powerful. That's powerful. powerful. That's powerful. Let people Thank know where they can find you on social media. All right, y'all. So on Facebook, I'm CC Clark, just the letter CC Clark. Uh, Instagram, TikTok is CC the coach, just the letter CC the coach. And then uh, on LinkedIn, because I'm a little professional now, <laughs> Clarissa Clark. Clarissa Clark on LinkedIn, C L A R I S S A Clark. Conference. We're here with none of the other Mr. Darius Daniels. How you doing? I'm great, brothers. How y'all doing, man? Thank you so much absolutely. for doing this. Yeah, absolutely, uh, man. Just My pleasure. You just yeah. tore down the stage, let the people know what you just spoke about. Man, listen, I just really talked about the difference between having money and actually prospering. Mm. <laughs> mm. And that it is possible to get the stuff you don't have without giving up the stuff you do. You know, I think we kind of live in an age and an era where people feel like, yo, I got to have peace or money. And it's like, no, you got to have peace and money you just have to learn what keys unlock the both and life instead of the either or life mm. and that's really kind of what i talked about just four keys and four areas that i learned that really just kind of changed and transformed me and moved me from just having some money to actually prosper mm. powerful wow. powerful yeah, yeah so you talked a lot about fear like dig deep into that like when i know there's a lot of fear like we we don't want to take that extra step but talk a little bit about that. Yeah, when I talked about, right, so there's fear in that sense, right? But mm -hmm. then the, what I talk, talked about, some something along the lines of, I think that a lot of us feel if you come from nothing. So if you come from nothing and you get, have some degree of success, mm -hmm. there's a fear you kind of have of ever going back there. Mm. That can be healthy if it's monitored and managed. But when that is not monitored and managed, that fear actually consumes and controls you. And a lot of people call it drivenness. I'm driven. It's like, no, you're really scared. And that's why you're not taking care of yourself. That's, the, that's why you're not growing spiritually. That's why you're not growing emotionally. That's why you're neglecting the most important people in your life. And when they pass away, you're going to be at the funeral 
not only dealing with grief, you're going to have a regret. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so you can, you know, you're going to have grief. Don't add regret on top because right. the people that meant the most to you got the least from you. Mm-hmm. And um, so for me, it's about, hey, not letting fear consume you and drive you to the point where yeah. you end up missing out on other things that are worth more to you than money. Wow. wow. Powerful. One last question that we ask in all of the speakers. What What is your path to prosperity? Uh, it's really the four things that I talked about mm-hmm. in the message. It mm-hmm. is, it's, it's like a four lane freeway. <laughs> you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. It's one lane is spiritual intelligence. That gives me significance in my sixth sense. The other lane is my emotional intelligence. The other lane is my relational intelligence, managing the relationships in my life. And the other lane is my leadership intelligence, which is primarily self-leadership, like my ability to lead myself and then my ability to lead the people that are helping me not only live my life, but do the thing that I, the things that I'm supposed to do. Wow. wow. Four Power. lane highway. Four lane awesome. highway. Gotta remember that. Thank you so much for doing this. Let people know where they can find you on all socials. Everything, man. It's Darius Daniels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's Darius D H. Mm-hmm. So I don't think anybody in the universe spelled their name that way. <laughs> I was mad at my mom and dad when I had to spell it in school. But now that I'm grown, it makes sense. So yeah. it's D-H-A-R-I-U-S Daniels. At, that's everything. I think it's that on MySpace. Is MySpace still up? No, I, I don't know. know. That on MySpace. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that one, <laughs> We're here with Mr. Marcus Rocher. How you doing, brother? Man, phenomenal. How about yourself? Oh, man. Listen, excellent, excellent. you're on everybody's feed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey. Yes, sir. Um, did you go on stage yet? Not yet. Tomorrow at 12 o'clock. Let the people tomorrow. know what you're going to be talking about. Man, so the big thing I'm talking about tomorrow is the internet is noise and what people don't realize we're in the middle of a social media recession. What's a recession? Mm-hmm. When the supply outweighs the demand where there's so much supply of podcasts and content, but the demand for people's attention is so great that there's way too much supply to meet the demand of people's attention. So I'm going to show how do you actually steal attention? get people to click links, buy from you, work with you. So that's what we're going into tomorrow. That wow, falls right, wow. right up our alley, Rob. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the, <laughs> I mean, it's the podcast world is just ridiculous. Now. Yeah, it's just, yeah. <laughs> do you think there's room for a lot more? Oh, 100% there's okay. room, man. I, I don't, I believe, man, it's kind of like the same way that the human body always needs food. The human mm-hmm. brain chooses words, concepts, mm-hmm. belief, mm-hmm. right? So to say that there's not, that podcast is oversaturated, that's like saying people, there's too many restaurants. Mm-hmm. As we evolve, we might change our diet. We don't eat McDonald's anymore. So the quality of the food we want changes as we grow and evolve. So that's all that's going to change. Now, how did you get your start in this game? Man, I got started back when it was free conference call dot com. There was (laughs) was no Facebook Live, no Instagram Live. So in 2014, I'm coming up on 10 years in the marketing space. And what I found, man, the only way to stay competitive is to be um, with AI and everything, deep empathy, high skill, care enough that you take responsibility for people's problem where it's not about money at a certain point, right? Mm -hmm. Once you scale your business. So when I got into it, man, I just wanted to, I'm a faith guy. I wanted to partner with God to eliminate certain things off people's prayer lists. So mm-hmm. if somebody's praying for money and I help them make money, that's off the list. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow, I like that. That's powerful. Wow. Let people know what is your path to prosperity. Man, my path to prosperity is very simple. I call it my life mission statement. Number one, what pleases God. Number two, what I'm gifted at and love doing. Number three, what helps people. And number four, what pays me well. Mm. Mm. Amen. That's deep. That's chills right there. You got to let people know where they can find you. Man, whether you're the FBI or jealous girlfriend, I'm easy to find. (laughs) (laughs) Marcus Y. Rose, if you type in Marcus and the letter Y, I pop right up on all platforms. My social media drug of choice is YouTube and Instagram. And people can just keep scrolling up. You will eventually pop up. (laughs) I'm telling you, you all over. You don't know this guy. Yeah, Yeah, for sure, for sure. Thank you. No doubt, man. Introduce yourself to the people. How y'all doing? My name's Alan Thornton, and I'm the uh, CEO of the 40 Acre Conference. Mm, powerful. Tell Ooh. us about it. So it's all about cash flow community culture. We're the largest conference in the world on MLK and Juneteenth. We own not only the 40 Acre Legacy Builder Awards, but it's kind of like the, the Grammys for Black entrepreneurship. And we hold wow. it on MLK. And then the even bigger awards is the Juneteenth Hall of Fame. And we, we own that as a minority supplier. So we just highlight excellence black excellence specifically on uh, those two holidays oh, wow. Wow. So, yeah. how long how long you guys been around so we've been doing it so I'll, I'll give you a, a quick story this all started two years ago back in 2021 uh, when a lot of back in 2020 actually 
when I was sitting on my couch watching Ash Cash and EYL, right? And I said, one day I'm going to be on stage with them. Mm-hmm. And it was also during the time right after George Floyd died when a lot of the comp- corporations were saying, look, I want to give a million. I want to give a hundred million. I want to give a billion. And to me, all that sounded was like a good press release. They mm-hmm. didn't really intend to do anything. Mm-hmm. And what it sounded like more specifically was 40 acres and a mule, right? A great promise with poor implementation that was just going to be swept away. And I said, look, I'm going to start a conference called the 40 acre. I didn't really know what I was going to do because it wasn't really cool back then yet. Mm -hmm. And I went to the centennial of black wall street. I just felt led to go there. And I wrote down on a piece of paper, I'm going to find some people here that are going to help me expand this vision. Mm -hmm. And in a small room in Tulsa, Oklahoma, I met Rashad, Troy Mm -hmm. and Hill Harper and Ian on a market Monday. And people wouldn't believe me unless I showed them pictures, but I have that picture in a small barbershop, like 50 people. Mm-hmm. This is before Invest Fest. This is before any of the, all that. Mm-hmm. Before they had 200,000 followers, <laughs> right? Now yeah. they have 1.2 million. Right. 1.7 million now. Yeah. And ever since then, I said, look, I got this big vision, this big goal. And they said, hey, we're going to do Invest Fest. Believe it or not, there were some people in that room that said, man, y'all are YouTubers. Just stick to the whole conference, man. Oh, wow. Mm. Now they say, oh, man, I knew you could do it. I knew you could do it, right? Right. I can also remember in that same time in Tulsa, Oklahoma, when Sheila Jackson Lee said she's working on the legislation Mm -hmm. to make Juneteenth a federal holiday. Mm -hmm. There's some of us brothers in the back saying, man, a a black federal holiday? It's hard to do a federal holiday, much less a black one. Mm -hmm. And I remember walking to her after and say, hey, I have this big vision, too. I know you're going to get this. And once... You make that happen, I'd love to top in. And a year later, Juneteenth was a federal holiday. And globally, we own the Juneteenth Hall of Fame. Wow. wow. So wow. just taking yeah. notes from other people, not because we're incredibly great, but we consistently come in the room and take notes. Mm. Right. So powerful that's stuff, man. Yeah, that's yeah, powerful, yeah. man. That's that's powerful. All about being in the same room. How, how all about it? Talk a little bit about relationship. How yeah. how important it is to just build relationship with the right people. Yeah, so our whole tagline for our conference is you're one connection away. If you're familiar with like ClickFunnels, uh, mm-hmm. a lot of my team was just down there. His whole thing is, hey, you're one funnel away, and he helps build people funnels. We help build black connections with the right people. We have millionaires and billionaires in our conference, right? And a lot of us have, and so many times as black entrepreneurs, we quit because it's too hard, And but we're like, we're acres of dime, we're three feet of gold away, and we just need one thing to take us to that next level. Mm-hmm. A lot of us think that one thing is money, but a lot of times if we don't have money, it's, it, money's not our problem. Mm-hmm. It's either marketing, right? You saw the brother talk about marketing. It's either uh, we're not converting ourselves or we're not, we don't, we're not going after the right audience, mm-hmm. right? We need to upgrade our audience and get past what we're doing. I'll give you an example. For a while, I was I had these manifestation shots, right? I'm big on manifestation. It's my mm-hmm. whole story. And I was giving them out for free. Mm-hmm. But people didn't know who I was. Then I had an opportunity to open up for Eric Thomas. Ooh, wow. And after that, I had everybody on stage taking these manifestation shots. People started by how much are these shots? And a guy said, man, those are luxury shots. They're $100. I said, yeah, they're $100. People started buying them, $100 each. Wow. I was giving them out for free the day before. Oh, wow. So sometimes it's just having that attachment mm-hmm. to the right people that makes your thing hot, but you got to stay consistent. Yeah. Got to stay consistent. That's consistent. powerful. Yeah. Um, are you honoring somebody on stage tomorrow? You said. Oh, I just you I got off stage. You just yeah. got off stage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Talk about those, that. Talk you know about those that. diamond awards? Right, oh, right. Y'all don't see them. I didn't see them yet. So our awards are in the shape of a diamond on purpose because in order to make a, a diamond, you got to be under intense pressure. Mm-hmm. intense heat right mm-hmm. and you'll see on facebook you'll see on linkedin when somebody gets a new job everybody's like oh i had a new job you say you start a new business crickets hmm. right <laughs> it's a lot of heat mm-hmm. you going out you stepping out so we really want to highlight entrepreneurship and those that are doing big things so we give out uh, awards, our Legacy Builder Awards, similar to, to ClickFunnels. Shout out to Ro- Russell Bronson. He's done a great thing. Um, but we give awards starting at $100,000, um, a million, 10 million, 100 million, and a billion. 
we always have a couple billionaires that are black billionaires, right? Wow. They're hard to find. When I was a kid, I I couldn't touch a black billionaire, mm -hmm. right? Now we sponsor over 500 kids to be what they see to come to our conference. And they can see someone that looks like them. Where I grew up, the people like, <laughs> let's soup fool you, the people that I grew up with that had the Range Rover, had the things that I wanted or I thought I wanted, the material things, they were drug dealers. They were pushing weight. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. that's not, I didn't know somebody that built a million dollar funnel with the knowledge that they knew that was legit. Mm -hmm. Right. And now that we can show people that, I just had a, a vendor fair, rented out a whole theater. And my daughter, who's eight years old, I showed her how to set up a booth and she made $200 in an hour and a half. Nice. So to be able to do that, man. That's, that's powerful. Legacy, no, man. That's definitely that's powerful. That's a legacy. Speaking that's of legacy, legacy, man, uh, before you get out of here, you got to let people know what's your path to prosperity. My path to prosperity is connections, right? You're one connection away. And if people just know how to find their place and own it, just like Black Wall Street, everybody doesn't have to do everything. But if I do this thing, and you do this thing, and you do this thing, and we all do that one thing well and connect with each other, there's a misconception about, about wealth. A lot of people think, let's say to make a hundred million dollars, you need a hundred million dollars in the room, but you only really need a million dollars with a hundred people tapped in with each other, circulating that mm. you can create a hundred millionaires. Mm. So you're just that one connection away, get in the room with the right people. Let's make it happen together. Connection is powerful. powerful. Absolutely. Hey, the, tell the people where they can find you on social media. And all so you, you can find me at, I am Mr. 40 acre. And at the 40 Acre Conference on, on Instagram and 40 Acre Conference will pop up on all platforms. Hope to see everybody in Houston, Texas, January 12th to the 15th. We have not only our signature Legacy Builder Awards, we do a whole golf tournament. Oh, swear. Nice. Even if you don't play golf, <laughs> girls, I know you like bring out your golf outfits. We got a band out there. It's where homecoming meets golf. It's a it's a whole thing. Hey, we, may, we may have to go Come take on. a trip to Houston, January. Houston, 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 New York. I don't know, but yeah. we I think we out there. Yeah, I think like the team is like yes. Yeah, we we yeah <laughs> we yeah we yeah. 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 Going to Houston. Yeah, right, we got cool. million dollar finals. Right, it's a good time. So hey, thank y'all for the opportunity. Appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate you. Anytime. We're here with Denise Williams, also known as Denise the Broker. All right. We just heard you just turned on the stage. Let the people know what you just spoke about. <laughs> so I just talked to the audience about how to become an international investor in Dubai. I am the first black American woman to start an international real estate firm in Dubai. Wow. And so I wanted to teach people how they can actually earn income in different currencies, uh, currency in different currencies. And doing that in Dubai is the new way that people should be looking at how to invest. All right, we're going to stop right there. Yeah, yeah. Why, not, why not New Jersey, yeah. New York, Atlanta, 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 Dubai? Talk Dubai. to us about Dubai. So let me ask you a question okay. to that question. Uh -huh. Do you feel like the dollar is appreciating or depreciating? Definitely depreciating. So why would you continue to invest your dollar in a depreciating market? Ooh, powerful. So why not put that same dollar that has 3.6 times more buying power into a market that is appreciating? Mm. Makes and sense. so that's what I want to teach people, that path to prosperity. How do you go from the U.S. dollar to earning currency and different currencies worldwide? You know, we get so focused and one track minded a lot of times about how do I earn in my backyard? But now it's time to diversify our real estate portfolios abroad. Wow. About to be a whole mini podcast. <laughs> okay, so yeah. where, where did you get your start? What did you say to yourself? Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm, I'm done with here with the states. I'm mm -hmm. going to go tap it. Yeah. What, what was that trigger point for you to say I'm going to go into Dubai? Yeah. So I went to Dubai in 2021. I was invited out by Stephen Marjorie Harvey. I've worked with their foundation, mm -hmm. and so they had already had a jump start in doing business in the Middle East. And so when I went over there and I experienced the culture, I looked into the real estate market, and I also saw that there was a huge opportunity gap between American and the Middle East. And I'm like, where are the American realtors teaching people how to invest in this emerging market? The UAE is only 52 years old. So imagine if you owned a piece of land in the US when it was 52. Mm. And so it's like, let me show you guys what these people are over here doing. We see the wealth, but why aren't we transacting? Why is it that we go over there and we want to do a desert safari, but we don't want to get a check? Okay. So I just want to show people how to do that. Gotcha. Wow. So what are the common, like, you know, mm -hmm. going as an investor here mm -hmm. in, the, in the States. Mm -hmm. So now what are the common questions? Like, okay, I'm going abroad. Who do I trust? Who do I see? I mm -hmm. don't know what, I, you yeah. know, this is brand new to me. So like, what are some of the common? That was the exact 
problem I wanted to solve. I wanted to be the face. I wanted to be the liaison, or I am, not wanted to be, I am the liaison between the US and the UAE in the real estate sector because of that reason. You want to do business with someone that you know, like, and trust, or at least Mm -hmm. someone that you feel like you can connect with uh, and that has something to lose versus someone that's a stranger you never met in Dubai. I still have a business here in Atlanta. So I'm very accessible. You know, I have a track record of success. I've been in real estate since 2012. So I'm just applying what I've been doing to a new market. Gotcha. Kind of a two part question just for clarity. Are you Mm -hmm. buying land and Mm -hmm. or real estate? Uh And then if you are buying real estate, what type of like real estate or properties are you purchasing? Good question. So people that I'm teaching, they're buying apartments or condos, what we would call condos here in the U.S. because they build up. So they don't really build out. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's really the best way to invest, especially as an entry level. I wouldn't say investing into land and doing development unless you're going to relocate. But a quick, easy way to get into the market is through off plan investing, which is new construction properties. So that's the main way that I'm teaching people how to invest. I think I'm ready to go to Dubai. (laughs) Yeah, come, Habibi, come to Dubai. (laughs) Yes, come on out there. Yes. So we're asking all of the speakers, uh, what is your path to prosperity? So my path to prosperity is about how can I help our paths to prosperity? Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just about me. How can I teach one, you know, reach one and teach one? And so that's what prosperity means to me. Coming and speaking to people about what I've done and showing them how they can do it too. And so just education, education, knowledge, and execution. That's my path to prosperity. Beautiful, beautiful. beautiful. Let people know where they could check you out so you can follow me at denise the broker on all platforms you can go to my website denise the broker.com and then you know what i'm saying pull up on your girl in dubai <laughs> all right yes after prosperity conference and we're here with core hughes hey no doubt let the people know what you're going to talk about today so actually uh it's about mindset you know um one of my favorite uh scriptures it talks about god cannot uh he won't put new wine in the old wine skins Right. Mm-hmm. And I think the reality is that if you want to shift your your path to prosperity, one of the first thing that has to shift is your mindset, the way you think. So a man think of it, so is he. And so um, we have to go from thinking, um, you know, living a minimalist life to prosperity. And mm-hmm. it takes a shifting of the thought process. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's deep, man. So um, talk about a little, you talk about mindset. Now, we know a lot of the challenges that we go through every day. Yeah. And that's one of our key words, like <laughs> mindset yeah. over everything. Yeah. So like talk about like deep a little bit of the nugget about like going you're going through a certain challenge and you have to shift that that mindset yeah so you know one thing about it is the challenges we are going to face them right mm-hmm. and that's something we cannot negate that challenges come to all of us mm-hmm. but the way that you process that challenge is it dictates how you prosper through that challenge right mm-hmm. and so i think the way that you prosper through that challenge is by processing differently and the processing is your mind right how do i see it right and so a lot of times I go from the perspective of saying, I'm not a victim, but I'm a victor. This didn't happen to me, but it happened for me, Mm. right? And so if you can start to shift those challenges and understand that this didn't happen to me, it's happening for me, and why is this happening for me? It's happening for my future. It's strengthening me for my journey. And so I think that's the most important thing. It's how you see it. Mm. Everything in life is just about how you see it, not what you experience, but how you see what you experienced, and can you extract some truth from that experience? Powerful. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of motivational speakers on stage this weekend, and you're you're in your next talk about, and it's almost like it's done by design. Talk about how important it is to reprogram that mind, and repetition is key. Yeah, it is. It's it's one of the most important things, right? And so I have this exercise that I do every single day. I stand up and I envision where I want to go, right? Because as I envision where I want to go, it supersedes where I am and it programs my body and my mind and my thoughts to go beyond what I feel, Mm -hmm. what I see to where I'm going. And I think that's extremely important. If you don't have a vision for where you're going, then you won't act. It's simple. The Bible says that faith uh, without works is dead, right? But for me, I have the faith. And because I have that faith, I'm always working to accomplish what I believe. And if you don't believe it, then you'll work it, right? And so if you really want to see somebody's actions, it's really about what they believe. Do you believe that you're the head and not the tail? Do you believe that you can walk in prosperity? Do you believe that you can be, you know, debt free? If you believe that, then everything you do in life is going to walk towards that belief system. Wow. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell the people where they can find you before we get out of here. Oh, before we, I'm sorry. What is, what is your path to prosperity? 
So my path to prosperity is uh, a few things. So I'm a serial entrepreneur, mm-hmm. um, written a couple of books. Uh, I'm starting a conference right now, I'm married to a beautiful woman. I think the best path is my wife. Uh, <laughs> right. So right. uh, married to a beautiful woman. But um, and, and so my path to prosperity is not, as Darius Daniel said today, it's not just about making money, but it's about creating situations where other people can be successful as well. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I think that, you know, God gives us a gift and it's not just for us, but it's also to be a blessing to other people. Mm-hmm. So my path to prosperity is to go before my brothers and have success and reach back and grab them and show them how I did it. Powerful stuff. Yeah, is, yeah. Uh, let the Very people nice. know where they can find you for some more information. Yeah, you can always find me on Instagram. All the handles, Corey L. Hughes, that's C-O-R-Y-L Hughes. Um, uh, my tag is Corey the Coach. Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, all of that. I'm here, man. Tap in with me. And we're here with Derek Harper, senior. What's up? Uh, you heard it here first. Hey, talk to the people, man. Let them know what you're going to be talking about. Man, first of all, I've been in a mergers, acquisition, business buying. You know, a lot of people, man, when I talk to 100 black men and black women, less than one of them know how to take a company public. Less than one of them know how to actually buy a business, sell a business, right? Because we're building hustles, we're not building things that we can sell and continue to let our family grow off. For instance, if I sell 10% of a business, but then defer the equity into a trust for my kids to be able to live off, whatever I sell can forever feed my family. So I'm gonna talk on that level. Wow, Ooh. this is powerful. This is another podcast interview. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. But let's talk about like the emotional values. That why a lot of us don't know about this stuff because we just have an emotional value to the company and we just don't want to sell. It's not even that, bro. It's just the fact that uh, what's your favorite food? Woo. Uh, let's say pasta. Pasta because you ate it. Mm-hmm. Why isn't caviar something you ain't ate? Whatever you haven't eaten, why is that not your favorite? I've never had it before. So we follow what we experience and, and, and our lifestyle and the things we chase is because what we see, what we experience, right? And we don't even know the things that we haven't seen exist until you get around people that's already doing it. So it's not the fact that we don't want to sell or we don't want to leave a legacy is we've never been in a position to have the upper hand. We just figuring this thing out now to be able to continue to push it to the black generations behind us. And so I think that the more they start seeing it happen and the more we start doing things like this, these conferences, so that people can see representation like them doing it, and then it becomes second nature at that point. Mm, Powerful. That's powerful, man. So what kind of, like, what are the common businesses that you come across? Well, everybody's coaching out here, right? And they want money for their coaching. Mm -hmm. I coach for equity. Because if I know that I can get you a result, for instance, if you don't know me and I ask you for $100,000 for me to get you somewhere, you're going to be like, man, screw off. Mm-hmm. But if you make it 300 k in your business every year and I say, hey, can I get 20% of anything that I can take you from 300000 to a million? You give me 20%. See, the money ain't there yet, so you'll give it up. That's how I carve mine out. Put a team behind it, put resources and things like that, and then I just take my equity. This is short tank right here, Rob. I hope you're paying attention. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's literally what it is. Elevator for it. 100%. <laughs> how, how did you get your start? Well, I was one of the first ones. Um, we actually own the largest black-owned virtual staffing company, right? And we're the only one that's actually incorporated in the Philippines with thousands of employees with an actual call center there, right? Everybody else just broker MBAs. We realized that it's a global economy now, right? Mm-hmm. You know, people migrating, but they migrating worldwide now. And so you can live anywhere, work anywhere, and build anywhere. So now what we realize is if I can buy a business that has super overhead, now I can decrease that overhead by putting a virtual team in place and then run the EBITDA up and sell it and exit my, with my equity. So um, before that, I realized that my overhead was too high in my American businesses. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then I had to replace it. And I realized for every manager I replaced, I bought a – so if I replace a customer service manager, I'm bringing a customer service team in. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, five people working 40 hours a week can outdo one person working 40 hours a week. Mm-hmm. And all I got to do is build, organize, document the whole process and then delegate it piece by piece. If you only answering the phone, you're the best phone answerer. But if I got you answering the phone and doing all kind of other stuff, it's hard to maximize that. So what I realized is if I bring a virtual team in that costs one fifth of the cost, then I can go ahead and maximize my team and then make sure that everybody's good with what they're doing. And when I start doing that and, and, and coaching and inserting them in the business, I realize most people don't need a coach for a business that's thriving, right? After about a year or two, because it's really just doing its thing. But that equity and perpetuity gonna last forever. So now it's easier to be able to consult for equity than to try to continuously build and teach people how to how you did it. They might not catch a break. You got your resources. Why make them go ahead and learn it when you can just do it for them? Powerful stuff, man. That was powerful, man. All right, so this is the common question. Mm-hmm. What is your path to prosperity? 
my path is, man, just good people right now. You know, continuous eight-figure years, man. It's not even about the money no more. Um, I'm just finding a hard time finding really good people. So my path is just connecting with genuine people. And, and, and you know, I was born and raised in a crack house, bro. So, like, mm -hmm. learning trust and things like that, um, you realize that when you start making millions, it's easy to get friends. You automatically assume that everybody is fake. And when you find that they real, hold on to them. And, and, and I think that the biggest path you can ever have is finding genuine people that's just not clout chasing. Wow. wow, powerful stuff, man. Powerful. Let people know where they can find you. Derek Harper Sr. I'm never really on, um, I'm reaching a million people a day on Facebook, right? That's that's my lane. But okay. Instagram, I'm there because they say I need to be there. But man, connect with me on Facebook. But but my Facebook link is on my Instagram, Derek Harper Sr. D-E-R-R-I-C-K-H-A-R-P-E-R-S-R. -R -R -E All, All right, man. Conference, and we're here with? Booker T. Washington. No doubt, my brother. Let the people know what you spoke about today. You just tore down the stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt, man. Path of Prosperity, amazing event. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Techie Homes. Uh, we are a micro home builder, uh, you know, best known for building the first uh, minority and black built uh, tiny home community in the United mm -hmm. States. And it's just a pleasure, man, to be here with everybody. No talk doubt. about, you know, wealth, uh, prosperity, your path towards it and how to get to it. Yeah. I usually see you in a suit and you pass right yeah. by me. Yeah. Yo, and you too, and you be talking that, that knowledge, man, even yeah. way before the pandemic, really like all about giving to back to the people and you know, giving education about real estate. This is one of Rob's best top favorite topics. Yeah, Rob's ask, ask the next yeah. question, Rob. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, so I'm six five. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly. My my thing was, okay, this guy's building tiny homes. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> But you're making a killing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. That's right. Like, what are, what are some of the challenges in real estate in that market? Um, believe it or not, there's more buyers in the small space, small dwelling market than there is in any market, if you really think about it. I mean, the average new construction home is well over 450000 in mm -hmm. every metro area. But to afford a $450,000 home, you got to be making over 125000 which is only 5% of the economy. Mm. So why are you gonna keep competing and building homes and price points that 95% of your particular buyer pool can't buy? True. So if you're building more apartments, more metroplexes, more attached living, then that's a signal that people don't care about land, they care about experience. Mm. So I build micro home communities to fit both the size of the house they're living in currently, but we make it accessible and affordable, which is under 250,000. Yeah, oh, that's, that's would he be yeah. able to fit in a micro home? Absolutely. The, <laughs> the, ceil the ceiling height in our micro homes are 10 feet and some of them are 22 feet because we mm -hmm. have lofted space. So just mm -hmm. like you would in any big, tall, tall, lofted space, just because the footprint is size doesn't mean the ceiling is small. So right. for you specifically, you could live happy in one of our micro homes. Gotcha. But right. you probably would love it because it's more affordable because mm -hmm. our average home has a mortgage of 1500 when people's mm -hmm. average rent is 2000 mm -hmm. In New York, especially. Correct. And if, you know, if <laughs> yeah. you think about, look, the average age people are buying their first home is 37 years old. Mm -hmm. All right. I need people to do the math. If you're getting out of college, you're 20, 22 years old, 21 years old. You're spending 10 years paying rent. That's $24,000 a year. By the time you get 35 years old, you spent $250,000 in cash. You just haven't spent it at one time, but you did. Mm -hmm. So instead of having still liabilities at 33, 34, 35, you could be worth a quarter of a million. And what if we change the economy where a lot of people walking around were worth a quarter million and having a negative net worth? Mm. And that's why the micro developments matter. Don't, Tell us don't. about what current project you're working on right now. Uh, current project is we continue to expand. Techie Homes uh, right now, we're going to continue to expand across uh, nationally and locally with our micro home builds. We're already set to our second and our third community right, right here within the Atlanta space. Union Park Cottages, Atlanta Park Cottages, mm -hmm. and East Park Cottages right here just within our Atlanta community. We have plans to expand across Texas, across North Carolina. Uh, and we're going to do that over the next three years. Our goal is to build over 500 micro homes around every metro area in the next three years and really grow this company to a brand that everybody recognizes. How big is your team? The uh, team right now continues to grow. So that's why we just got a major investment from Marvin, from Storm, from Ash, Path of Prosperity of $250,000. Wow. They are contributing to our capital raise campaign, which is a, a $10 million capital raise campaign where we're going to build a phenomenal organization. And we're going to go out here and build crazy, accessible, luxury micro homes for those who deserve home ownership. Wow. And what are the taxes like for these micro homes? Uh, I mean, the oh, average like tax the bill average, is yeah. about $2,000. Okay. Because you're just paying assessed value on the price of the home and the square footage. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a large square footage in that in that space, mm -hmm. but 
micro life because you're an active adult, you're working, and you're having an asset grow for you instead of you just paying rent and it going straight down the toilet. Gotcha. So gotcha. that is the reason why our product, our company, our brand, that's the reason why we have over 4,000 people on our waiting list. Mm. Wow. So when you say, well, who's buying micro homes? I say everybody. Wow. Right. Great and concept. that is why we're catching steam, building a great organization, uh, fantastic investment of 250 from Path to Prosperity. We're just going to continue to grow companies. Mm -hmm. We're not just doing projects. We're not just running a hobby. We're building a whole company. And this is what people should be taught to do more mm -hmm. instead of just trying to get to a bag, get to all the bags. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, wow. So, Locations? A question from the audience. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so if you're looking to purchase one of our homes, you can go to southparkcottages.com. You can go to techie-homes.com. Uh, our future communities, unionparkcottages.com is where you can get on the waiting list. Now, it's going to be very few homes in these communities, somewhere between 25 and 40 homes per community. So it is first come, first serve. We mm -hmm. believe in fairness. So everybody needs to focus on being prepared to buy. So if I'm a potential home buyer right now, I'm talking to a real estate professional. I'm trying to get pre-qualified and pre-approved. I'm working on those things to make me an accessible homeowner. But because the price point is lower, the accessibility is going to be better. Powerful. So now so the demand and supply. Uh, the state, is our first, our next communities will be right here in Georgia, in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And then further states that we're looking to develop is Texas and North Carolina. And, and how fast, um, as far as developers, like how, what's the turnaround time? Uh, our turnaround time is somewhere between 12 and 14 months to start a community and build a community. So the turnaround time, and we plan to build several communities at one time next year. So our plan is to have three or four communities available for people next year. And our plan is to have over 500 homes available by the end of 2026. Wow, wow yeah. powerful. Wow. I want to take you back from the beginning. How did you even start to get into this industry? Believe it or not, I started from a nine to five. So when we, they're teaching here at Path to Prosperity is important because transitioning your life and finding a path is not always defined. So I started as a person in corporate America. I utilized all those skills to be of being a great communicator, presenting ideas and projects and reports. So although we hate those pieces of our jobs at times, those skills you build is what made me a great developer. Because development of real estate and real estate in general is just all about communication and effective communication. And if what I broke down the statistics of how people are living and where they're living and what price point they're living at, the idea of building micro homes only made common sense. And the biggest companies are answering your most common sense solutions. Jeff Bezos just wanted to open a bookstore. <laughs> Elon didn't invent the car. He just put the battery underneath the car. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Facebook, you were already making pictures and sending messages to your friends before Facebook got invented. They just found a place for you to do it all in one place. Mm. So defining the easiest solutions to things is how you build companies. And that is the path to true wealth and prosperity. Man. Wow. I was about to ask you what your path to prosperity <laughs> was. Kinda, yeah, he answered it all yeah, right there. If you want to extend to that, go ahead. But that's what we're asking everybody. That's what Storm and Marvin and Ash wanted us to ask all of the guest speakers. Absolutely. What is your path to prosperity? My path to prosperity is defining and making a way for others. Uh, if I can make a way from you, for you through your starter home in real estate or a home you're downsizing to, because our micro homes in our company is built to democratize home ownership. So by defining a path towards wealth for others, I will in tune become wealthy. I have a saying, I always say it, I will always do good by doing well. Powerful. And if you can find your business that does both and not subject yourself to say, well, I don't care about the consumer, I just care about me then that's why our path that's why our path towards wealth always gets stagnated so i'm doing both i'm gonna do good i'm gonna still do well and everybody that comes along with me will find their own individual path to prosperity nice very, very nice, nice, very, nice. Yeah. very nice let people know where they can find you if they want to invest or if they want to get in one of micro homes yeah absolutely we totally believe in group economics look people techie homes is about group economics and growing together and building wealth together everybody always wants to know i wish i was around in this company when it started because i would have read rode, rode that ride with them mm -hmm. you can do that with techie homes to reach out to us you can go to www.techie-homes.com or you can go to southparkcottages.com you can reach me on instagram at mr underscore booker underscore t and just like we just got an investment of $250,000 from the Path to Prosperity guys, you can also be part of this ride, be a part of the next multi-million dollar brand of building homes. And we are doing it in real life. 
powerful stuff, man. Very powerful. And we're here with Carter Cofield. No Best doubt, man. in the game. Hey, yeah. there Just it is. Everybody wants to know. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> let's, let's, let's talk some taxes for sure. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let the people know in depth what you're going to be talking about today in depth. So I'm going to be teaching entrepreneurs how to live tax free because it's not about how much money you make, it's about how much money you keep, right? So it's not just about making the bag, it's also about keeping the bag. And that's what I plan to teach the audience today. Powerful stuff. Ooh, tax free. Yeah. I mean, that's a subject that a lot of people don't want to go into because it's, it's yeah. touchy. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. April 15th, there's like, uh. It's a lot of paperwork, too. <laughs> a lot of paperwork. <laughs> but from what we've learned and what we've experienced, mm -hmm. You have to be our best friend and vice versa. Yeah. So now how do you reach out to the people and say, look, I'm I'm your guy? Well, I believe people fear what they don't understand, right? So the only reason we're scared of taxes is because we just don't understand it. Mm. But if you don't understand it, you got a silent business partner that's going to be taking around 40 to 50% of the money that you make. So if you make a million dollars, you've given away half of it. And that's not okay. So mm. my job is to teach those strategies that wealthy people have been doing to not just make the money, but also keep the money because you can't build generational wealth without keeping all the money that you earn, right? Powerful stuff. Yeah. Um, path to prosperity. What is your path to prosperity? My path to prosperity is, I love what Storm says, always seek knowledge because uh, I believe that the more you learn, the more you earn. And if you're not learning every single day, you're not going to be earning every single day. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get your path to prosperity, you have to um, get in the right rooms, find the right knowledge, find the right mentors, and uh, learn things that you didn't learn before so you could be somebody that you couldn't become before. Wow, wow. interesting. So this is your camera right here. Yeah. Tell this person, the business owner who's just starting out, right. what, is, what is a, give them a simple nugget. <laughs> um, a simple nugget to start off. Um, well, you don't have to be great to get started, but you do have to get started to be great. Mm. So don't over, don't over um, think a situation where you can just start now because most people um, can never be great because they never get started. So just get started, find the right people around you and get a good circle because if you're the smartest person in your circle, you're not in a circle, you're in a cage because you can't learn, you can't grow. So find the right circle, find the right uh, in, uh, insight and just get started today. Perfect. Awesome. Let people know where they can find you for more information. Um, you can follow me at Cofield underscore advisor on all social media platforms. And I look forward to helping you. Right. And we're here with Coach Kelly J. All right. Now, all right. let the people know what you're going to be speaking about today. I'm going to be speaking about the authenticity of using your story and how there's someone who needs you to show up for them as if you had someone to show up for you. Well, interesting Powerful stuff. The coach's coach. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, I am a coach that coaches coaches. I teach the people that, that reach the people. I figure that's my biggest way to make an impact and get jewels in my crown mm -hmm. to give them to the gates of heaven. The more people I'm reaching, the more people that can be impacted with my divine assignment. Wow. What's one thing when you're coaching these coaches that you find challenging that they're trying to break through to try to inspire others? Oh, self-belief is huge. Mm -hmm. Just put Every, everyone has a story that that they are here to tell. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times their their testimony comes full circle when they share it with someone else. Because like I said, someone else is going through that. But the belief that someone needs them is huge. If I can get someone past believing that someone will pay them mm. for what comes easy to them, it's a game changer. It's a legacy breaker. Hmm. That's uh, powerful. That's, what what is um what is one challenge you like going through be, trying to become a coach not, nowadays with social media and everybody wants to be a life coach and business coach and like what are, what are some of the challenges that you know you see that people are going through like nowadays? I think a lot of the challenges is that people think that they have competition and they really don't mm. because you're the only one that's designed to do that thing. So while there's other people that that do what you do, you're a life coach, they're a life coach, there's, your sheep will hear your voice, mm. right? right? Your sheep will hear your mm. voice. Mm. So if you concentrate on what you're assigned to do, who you're assigned to reach and meet, then there is no competition. Mm. Powerful. Powerful. Okay. So we're asking everybody, all the speakers today, uh, what is your path to prosperity? So what is your path to prosperity? My path to prosperity is really just just showing up to be me and knowing that the fruit is tied to my obedience. Powerful. Wow. Can you expound on that a little bit? <laughs> That's a powerful message. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the Bible says that we get to have abundance 
and overflow and all of these things. Mm -hmm. But in order to unlock those things, you have to first believe, like I said, mm -hmm. you have to be willing to show up as you, even in the rawness of what your story is. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and everything flows from that. You know, the God has something in store for all of us. But if we're not doing what he called us to do, if we're trying to be, I'm, I'm Kelly. If I'm trying to be Keisha, I can't get Keisha's blessings. Keisha's blessings are for Keisha. Mm -hmm. Coach Kelly's blessings are for, are for Coach Kelly. Mm -hmm. And so if people could learn to understand that and operate in their lane, there's nothing you can't have. Powerful. That is All powerful. Right. Wow. Let people know where they could uh, find you for more information. You can find me on Instagram at, at Coach Kelly J. You can find me on YouTube at Coach Kelly J on demand. All right. All right. Path to Prosperity Conference, P2P, and we're here with one of the three. Mr. Marvin Mitchell, what's yes, up, my sir. brother? How y'all doing, man? Doing Excellent. good, man. Excellent. Love the work. Love the work. Good. Likewise. Appreciate Likewise, you, man. man. Appreciate Absolutely. you, man. Thank you so much, man. Tell us your thoughts on how this weekend's been going. Oh man, it's been it's been magical, man. When we put this conference together this year, we intentionally decided that we wanted to make it more intimate. Last year we had about 700 people. This year we said we wanted to cap it at 300. You see, it's sold out, mm -hmm. but the impact and the intimacy of the event and the touchability and the accessibility of the speakers to the people, man, it's just created a dynamic experience. We did the masquerade ball last night. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when I say it was just amazing, the relationships you see built, you saw people coming in this morning. At the, I know I saw them up at two, three in the morning. Yeah. I don't mm -hmm. know how I saw them because I was <laughs> sleeping at 11. But, uh, <laughs> but just, just going in and just seeing, you know what I'm saying? Them coming in in the mornings, hugging each other, people who didn't know each other one day before. And that was the whole goal of it, uh, to create those relationships. And that's truly the path to prosperity. 100%. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. So now preparing this, yes, like sir. this is huge. Like how long did it take you guys, you, um, Ash and Storm? Like talk about that preparation time. Yeah. So so last year we, we started planning this two months before the event. This year we had the whole year to plan for it. Mm -hmm. But sometimes more time isn't necessarily a good thing. Right. Just because oh, you have more time don't mean that you're going to get more done mm -hmm. because the reality of it is, is that, you know, we kind of we kind of coasted for the first few months. And then when it was time to turn it up, we turned it up. Mm -hmm. So there's a lesson in that. The more time you give yourself, the less less impact that you can make. Mm -hmm. But when you condense that time and say we need to get something done now, then something happens in your brain. That sense of urgency that you develop becomes important and then you get more done. So more time is not good. Mm, got you. So the three of you guys. Yes, sir. Which one of you are like the, there's always one that's like, okay, yeah. you know, the joker, the, the serious person. Joker's Ash. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. The one who's who's um, the person that's just uh, the wisdom person is, is Storm. I'm more so of the person that's like the serious one, the action takers, like, no, we got to get this done. Okay. I'm like, like, no, like we got to structure this right here. We got to right. build this team. So mm -hmm. I'm definitely like a lot of the infrastructure person behind the scenes. Okay, cool. Give us a one takeaway of what you spoke about on stage, specifically about um, life insurance. Um, what I spoke about about life insurance is truly becoming your own, uh, becoming your own bank. But I talked about uh, life insurance as, as a method, as a vehicle to funnel your money through and borrow against, because life insurance isn't really an investment, right? Life insurance is just a funneling system that you could then use and leverage it to make investments. So then you can make money two to three times off the same dollar. And I think a lot of people who are critics of it will say life insurance ain't an investment. They come to me and say, hey, life insurance ain't an investment. I'm not going to argue with you. I say, you're right. It's not an investment. Hmm. You use a life insurance to get the investment. Mm. You see the difference? And now you make your money work two to three times. Mm. Powerful stuff. Yes. Wow. Wow. Okay. So we got to ask you. Yes, sir. What's your path to prosperity? Individually or for Individual. the people? Well, so I would which, say which like way? individually. All right. So my path to prosperity is just serving, man. I know my path to prosperity is I've, I've been able to build my business and I've always wanted to create a team environment. So just hiring people was the was just something that I always knew I wanted to do, not to be a solopreneur. Mm -hmm. But when I came into this space, although I was successful in the financial industry, Hall of Fame financial advisor, nobody knew me in this space. So when I came in, I said I had to decrease so that I can eventually increase. So I just went to people who had an audience. I didn't have the audience. And when I went to them, I said, how can I serve you and help you to make a million dollars? And at first, people didn't take me serious. It was like, this dude will make me a million dollars, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever. Um, and then I help 
I know I helped one person do a million dollars in a day. Wow. And then all of a sudden word got around. I served behind the scenes still. I didn't get any accolades, no credit, nobody saying, hey, Marvin, thank you for doing it. Mm-hmm. Boom, helped another person do it, helped another person do it. But at the same time, I'm building my audience. I'm learning. I'm, I'm getting better at my craft. And then eventually somebody said, you've helping all of these other people do six figures, seven figures. Now it's your turn. Wow. And when I said that, it never even occurred to me to do it for myself. But when, when they said that, I said, you're right. And then we became the number one. We still hold the record on money produced in a day from a challenge in wow. our community. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank That's you. That's beautiful. Appreciate it. Let people know where they can find you for more information. Just look me up on IG, Marvin Mitchell Official, Marvin Mitchell Official. If you want to build, become your own bank through life insurance, instead of you going and searching the world, just simply go to wealthcreationcall.com. Wealthcreationcall.com. My team will personally assist you, complimentary, and help you to set up your plan. And we're here with Mr. Damon Dillard, let's all, go. All right, now, hey, you just tore down the stage. Appreciate you. Let the people know what y'all just spoke about. Man, purpose. <laughs> we talked about the path to prosperity being in your purpose, right? Mm-hmm. Success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. And so most people will fail unless they find and fulfill their own purpose. How do you, how do you translate that? How do you get mm-hmm. somebody to get to that? Yeah, nobody has to get to it because it's already within you, right? Mm-hmm. It's in you, not on you, right? Um, I think... Uh, the word said in Jeremiah at the end of Jeremiah that God knew you when you were in your mother's womb, which means he knew who you were going to be, how you were going to be, what your characteristics would be, even before your parents knew your name, before they knew whether you were going to be a boy or a girl, before they knew anything of you. Guess what? I think DJ Khaled said it best. God did. Mm-hmm. Right. And so mm-hmm. if he created you, he does everything very intentionally and purpose. If you look up the definition, definition, it means the original intent. And so the original intent of your life was to fulfill a purpose or be a solution to a problem that already exists on the earth. And so I know that my fulfillment will come from me fulfilling the purpose that God gave me. Mm. Interesting. So let's take it back a little bit. So where did you like literally start Mm. and say, you know what, I I'm going to fulfill this purpose. This Mm. is my time. Where'd you get that confidence from? From my mentor. Yeah. 2013, probably one of the most tumultuous, challenging times of my life. Uh, I saw what was possible through, for me through my mentor. Um, and I think whatever you, I, I just spoke to somebody out there, whatever you study, whatever you're drawn to, whatever you find yourself engaging in the most is typically your purpose. Mm-hmm. Like I study speakers, like I love incredible orators. Since I was growing up, I, I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, since a very young age, my mother would make me read every day and read out loud. And I've been speaking in front of crowds of 500 people since I was like five. And so I knew what would I do for the rest of my life? Bro, this. Mm-hmm. I would speak life into people. What comes easy for me but hard for other people? Articulating thoughts, teaching. Mm-hmm. What was my source of agitation? People lacking in confidence. Mm-hmm. I think Marianne Williamson said it best. What would you do if you knew you could not fail? And so when I look at a lot of people, especially my coaching clients, they could do so much more if they just simply had the confidence, mm-hmm. the belief within themselves to do what God has put, put on their heart to do. Powerful stuff, mm-hmm. man. So we're asking everybody this mm-hmm. weekend, all the speakers, what is your path to prosperity? Mm-hmm. So we're asking you that today. What is your path to prosperity? Yeah, man, fulfilling my purpose. Uh, I believe that my purpose has been designed to positively impact the lives of a billion people. And mm-hmm. I want to uh, re-inject and reignite the purpose that's already been given into them because you're not missing anything. You already have within you everything that you need. But I love these events because it creates the proper environment. Um, I don't know if you ever heard of Miles Monroe, but he said it best. He said the difference between a bird and a fly is neither one of them had to go to school. They never had to go to university. They never needed a coach or a mentor to learn to do what they do. A bird naturally flies. Mm -hmm. A fish is naturally going to swim. But if I took a fish out of water and put it on dry land, what would happen? It would die. die. Right. But before it took its last breath, if I put it back into the water, it would come alive again. Mm -hmm. Why? Not because it didn't already have what it needed within it, but because it was in the wrong environment. Mm -hmm. And so places like this create the environment for people to unlock the purpose that's already in them. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you got to let people know where they could check you out for more information. Yeah, yeah. Find me on IG, Damon P. Dillard, your high income sales coach. Come holla at your boy if you're looking to make more money in a single day than about 85% of people will make in a year. Let's get it. Oh, well, let's get it. I heard it here first. Uh, back at the Path to Prosperity Conference with Miss 
Allison Bird, what's up, y'all? All right, you just tore down stage. You had people crying. <laughs> Chip, <laughs> had people had chills. We had chills. We yeah. just saw the presentation. Mm -hmm. Talk to the people what you just spoke about a little bit. Well, I think more than what I spoke about, it's the energetic field that I really created, which was the field of alchemy. The ability to withdraw the sting from the lessons that you lived. And that's what I did. I practiced and I drew out the stinger so that people could start to see and perceive their prosperity through their lived experiences. But if we're still stung by it, my husband left me, therefore I'm bad, I'm leavable, I'm unlovable, um, I lost the job, I'm unhirable, I'll never be rich, that still has a stinger in it. But when you can see the purpose, then you can retrieve the prosperity. Mm. Wow. Mm. Wow. That's deep. I don't even know what to ask after that. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Okay. So I'm in the room. Mm -hmm. I got chills. Mm -hmm. You're talking about your past, mm -hmm. you know, growing up. So your story, you said always that you can sell your story. Yes. Tell the people, sell your story. Mm -hmm. But how do you get someone who's like an introvert? Because a lot of people do not have that confidence. Mm -hmm. They just can't do it. Yeah. Stage fright. They, they feel like their story is just not sellable. Mm -hmm. How do you get that person to transform from becoming, going from an introvert to an extrovert and just selling the story? You don't, life does. Mm. Life will cause you to birth your voice. It will hit you until you speak. Mm. And so you might get cancer and be like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm. you might go to prison. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Your husband may beat you. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Somebody may die. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm still not gonna say anything. Mm -hmm. But suddenly something comes in your reality. One of my first clients um, was Sabrina Fulton, Trayvon Martin's mother. Mm. All her life, she, mm, I'm good. Mm, I'm good. But then he got killed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I must speak. Mm -hmm. Now she's on C-SPAN, CNN. Now she's, she got hit in a way that her voice oh, suddenly is birthed. Mm -hmm. So that's not my role as a coach. Mm -hmm. Life is going to do that for you. When life does that for you and your voice is born, then you come to me. Wow. Wow. <laughs> we're about we're about to have questions from the audience soon. <laughs> Man. What 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 was that moment what was that moment for you when you had to tell your story? The moments have continued to come. I knew that I was in the wrong story when I felt stale telling it. So when I tell the story of my dad left my mom, my dad beat my mom, my dad was in prison. That can be advantageous for the listener, but it's not advantageous for me, the teller, because I'm so far removed from that impacting my day to day. So the only way I would wanna tell it is for clickbait, even clickbait in the audience. Like, oh, what? Let me click on that, gossip. I'm not available for that. I'd rather you focus on the gain of my life than the gossip of my life. Right. So that's that's what I that's how I determine which stories I want to tell. But I live a very fertile life in both the shadow and the light. Like I spend time in prayer and meditation. I also spent three years in an affair. So in the shadow of that affair, I learned so much about myself, about why the two of us chose secrecy, chose our hidden agenda and uh, what that did for us at that time that we felt we really needed it. So I can tell that shadow and I can capture a whole two, three rows, depending on the size of the room, maybe 10 or 20, mm -hmm. by telling that authentic experience. I'm willing to live and I don't live all of my life in daisies, you know, mm -hmm. um, and in butterflies. Sometimes I'm in strip clubs and I'm willing to tell it when I'm in either or. Mm. Wow. Very transparent. Wow. So, transparent. Wow. So, <laughs> before, 
I know. This is the first time we really <laughs> like, okay, this is this is this Good is stuff. deep. This Good is deep. Stuff. But um they did warn us too. But um before getting on stage, mm-hmm. like what are some of your routines or like your manifestations? Do you talk to yourself? Like what are, what are some of the things that you go through before getting on stage? Yeah, one of the first things that I do is I know within 72 hours of getting on that stage, I am going to be bombarded with psychic knowings of the humans in that space. How do I know that? I used to pray like everyone, God use me. Um, And I've realized that's really a very lazy way, honestly. Mm -hmm. God use me. Mm-hmm. Well, you're kind of God and you're kind of going to walk on that stage and you're kind of going to be used. Mm-hmm. You just already know we are aspects of God, right? Mm-hmm. We are in the image and the likeness of Godness or goodness. So we already know that's going to occur. So really now I want to understand how <laughs> do I want God to use me? Do I want God to use me that when I turn my head this way, freedom comes out? Do I cherish every move I make on that stage that much? Mm. Or am I so egotistical that I rely on my memory and my human words to do the job? Very nice. You see? So I soak. I soak with the energies, which means I have to have a life with enough capacity for that. So when Marvin called and asked me to come be a part of this, I had to assess, can I soak with that many humans and what they're walking through? Because that means I've got to walk through your shadow of death. I know mine, Mm -hmm. right? I know mine is going to be like, do you want pizza over a salad? Eat the salad to keep your goals. I know my wars. Mm -hmm. Mm But when yours show up and yours show up, I got to be willing to go, okay, that's a new demon. Mm. Mm. That's a new demon. And I've got to be willing to stare it in the face so that when I walk into this room, I bring that triumph with me. I smell like your victory. Wow. So that's how I prepare. Wow. I don't want to keep you too much longer. <laughs> yeah. uh, but before we go, we were asking everybody, all the speakers, what is your path to prosperity? Mm-hmm. So what is your path to prosperity? My story. We can all make a living with our story. We can make a massive living with our story. The Bible is one of the longest, oldest running books. It's full of stories. Everything that we read is story. Every music artist that is successful, Nipsey Hussle will echo just like Tupac. Why? He told his story. Taylor Swift just hit billion dollar status. I love Taylor Swift, and yes, she can carry a little bop, but she's not an epic singer to me. My opinion of that doesn't matter. Her music tells her story to the audience that wants it, and it's ushered her into billion-dollar status. If we would dare to believe, because we walking around telling the great psychologist story, Jesus, we tell his story. People build churches on his story. Movements. We're still telling Mahatma Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi's story. We're still telling MLK's story. Our story is the only way that we can exit the code of work and tap into the higher frequency of worth. We are the birthplace of worth, but we won't feel it unless we redeem and reclaim ourselves from our story and then speak it into existence. Mm, bravo. Bravo, bravo. Gotta let people know <laughs> where they could find you <laughs> to tap in with you, Ms. Bird. What's up, everybody? It's Allison Bird, also known as Money Minister, Voice Alchemist, and Oracle, divine channel of the authentic wisdom that touches, moves, inspires, and impacts your reality. Check me out on Instagram at I am Allison Bird. Make sure to use the two L's and the Y. I'll see you there. All right. Conference, and we're here with Andre Norman. No doubt. You already know. Hey, you're going on stage later on. Let the people know what you're going to be talking about today. I'm going to be talking about how to reach out to 650,000 brothers and sisters who are incarcerated, sharing the information so they can two level up and hit their path to prosperity, man, because they're coming home. They need the advice. They need the information. Let's talk about it. Yeah, yeah, you have an interesting past. 
I, I've I've seen you on the on, on Dave's podcast, and I'm tuned in. I'm locked in when I see you. Like, talk about your your past a little bit for the people that don't know. Man, for everybody know, I grew up in the hood. I, excuse me, grew up in the hood. Man, struggled. Mom and dad beefing, called domestic violence in the 2020s. It was just beating your wife in the 70s. Mm -hmm. Didn't do well in school. Dropped out. Went to the street. When I got to the street, man, the streets do what they do. And I ended up in the penitentiary. When I get to the penitentiary, man, it's like, yo, either try to go to school and fight against the mob or join the mob. Mm. I joined the mob. And for six years, man, I banged as hard as I could, caught two cases, got shipped around the country, got kicked out of mass, nice. I mean, all the madness. I ain't going it's all the madness. You seen Kanye? I lived it. Twice I made him land planes, but it's like, I'm all in on nothing. And I woke up one day and I realized I'm the king of nowhere. Mm. Mm. I was like, yo, this, this, ain't, this ain't it. So I came up with a plan to go home and be successful. Because so many people come home and get free, the free people go back. Successful people standing here, path to prosperity with you. Mm. Powerful. Talk about Bro. the tablet. I don't even want to talk about that. This mm -hmm. tablet is game changer. I did 14 years in the penitentiary, and we had nothing like this. Technology is everything. We live on our iPhones. We live on our Androids. We live online. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters inside, we take this interview, we hit a button, and 650 brothers and sisters across the country see it instantly. Wow. So we're producing inf content for them because we don't want nobody to do 10, 15 years in jail. They come home, they're like, man, what's IG and what's Facebook? Some dude's been in jail since the 90s mm -hmm. before the internet came out. And they're going to walk out to this world like, what are you talking about? Followers. So we're trying to keep them up to speed. Now, AI's out. If we don't give it to them, they're going to be super lost. Wow. Wow. Powerful Talk stuff. about your purpose. You find, finding your purpose through this. My purpose is simple. I wake up every single day and I ask myself one question. Who can I help today? Who can I help today? I don't know who you are out there, what you're doing. I don't care how much money you got. I work with billionaires and millionaires and all the companies you can think of from Apple to Delta back. And all those people and all those companies are struggling somewhere in their life. Nobody's living perfect. And I come in and I help them with their struggles. And my purpose is simple, to help people, because I'm going to die one day. And when I die, they're going to say, well, throw them in the ground. They're going to give me a tombstone. I chose what's going on my tombstone. First, it's going to say Harvard Fellow, because I did that. Mm. Second, it's going to say, you know what I'm saying, honorable son, because I've been taking care of my parents on another level. Mm. And third, it's going to say I freed people. Information, in-person, addiction, just stuck in the wrong way. I'm helping people get better. So... That's what it's about. And you're traveling to all these prisons, spreading the message? Man, I do, I do corporate events, I do, and I do prison events. I just spoke in Orlando. I had a company called UKG. They're worth $22 billion. Mm -hmm. I'm saying they net about $4 billion a year. I took 10 of their executives to a prison in Orlando, Avon Park. Shout out to my brothers and sisters locked in Avon. We took 10 of their executives to Avon Park. They came into prison and watched me give a talk. I had them talk, and they came out and it changed. Because the stereotypical mindset of brothers in prison is we all crazy, we're psychopathic. Right. And, well, Andre's different. Mm -hmm. I'm not different. Mm -hmm. I'm just like them, and they're just like me. And if given the same opportunities, they can be better than me. Awesome, wow, brother. Add to what you were saying as far as purpose. We're asking everybody your path to prosperity. Can you add to that? What is your path to prosperity? My path to prosperity is collaboration. If you don't collaborate, you'll be walking a long mile by yourself. So my path to prosperity is collaborating with you brothers. I'll fly to New York and build with you. The brothers here, Price to Prosperity, Ash Cash and the team. Collaboration wins. I'm at Genius Network. Genius Network is the number one mastermind on the planet. It's 100 k a year to be a member. I'm the office manager. Nice. I'm there. They say we can't get in these rooms. CECP, which is the $21 trillion association that every company is a part of. I'm a fellow there. They say we can't get in these rooms. Harvard Law School. I've been there, employed since 2016. I'm cracking the door so the brother behind me can get in. And that's why I came today, because these brothers are doing it, and I just want to share with them. Collaboration. Like, oh, I'm good. Dre's, Dre's good. Mm -hmm. But I'm not good if you're not good. Mm -hmm. wow. That's deep, brother. Let people know that where they can find you for more information. If you want to find me, um, it's real basic. If you're on LinkedIn, my name is Andre Norman. If you're on IG, my name is Andre Norman. If you're just old school, my website is AndreNorman.com. And show up to the Path to Prosperity next year. You can see me in person because they're going to give me on my own slot. I'm going to come on stage. I'm going to blow it up for the brothers, man. So <laughs> you need to get a ticket to next year and stop playing. Yeah. All right. Where they could find the tablet. You can, only way you're gonna find this tablet is you catch a case and go upstate. <laughs> so you, really don't, you really don't want the tablet, right? No, no, no. You really don't want the tablet, right? You don't want the tablet. Mm. But um the information we put on the tablet, we make available for families. 
So you can just go to my website and it'll okay. direct you to where to see the content that we put on here for your family. Cool. All right. Sock by Sock say, by what's up, y'all? We're back at the Pastor Prosperity Conference with our brother, Mr. Wall Street Chapel. Ah, what's up, brother? Good family. How you doing? I appreciate this. No Likewise, doubt. Man. I appreciate y'all having me. Appreciate, appreciate y'all. First question. Yes. Um, crazy economy. Mm. When is it? ever best to get into the economy this invest. is this always makes the right opportunity uh billionaires increase their wealth by 10 in these type of economies right whether it's stocks whether it's real estate whatever it is assets on sale is how you multiply your wealth right we should never be scared of these type of economies the reason why people are scared of these type of economies is because they're not equipped mm. right and so when you ain't equipped confusion causes fear mm. Right. Anytime you're confused about anything, the, the natural inclination is to be fearful, is to be protective. Whereas when you see people in these type of economies get aggressive, you know they know something you don't know. Mm -hmm. But then people want to know what's next. Okay, I passed the fear factor. Then it's like the how much to get in. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? What would you say with that? Whatever you can. Okay. Like there's there's no the problem is we want to cookie cutter our way to wealth, mm -hmm. and that's that's not it. Everybody has a different amount that they can deploy mm -hmm. everybody has a different risk tolerance mm -hmm. right so i think you start with what you can do and the goal is never how you start the goal is what do you learn in the process so you can finish strong mm -hmm. right so if you put a runner on a track he want to start off good but he know he or she knows that in the race they build momentum periodically you know they set those okay i'm 10 meters in Boom, head up, there's a process. Head up, boom. Once I get a little more, boom. The goal is to finish strong. Start off good. Starting off good means starting off with what you can. Mm -hmm. Finishing strong means now, by the middle of the race or toward the end of the race, I'm maximizing what I got going on. Right. Gotcha. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. I want to yeah. say, I want to acknowledge and say thank you for what you've been doing for the culture. Oh, man. I've been, you know, I listened to your story and everything, you you know, growing up and all of that. And it's, I mean, it was definitely thank inspiring. You. Thank you. Um, also, what are the, some of the challenges right now that you face with the culture? Because it's like on your shirt, like you said. Well, she like, looks like us now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, what are some of the challenges now, like in the culture that you're facing? I think um, the key thing right now is I'll, I'll give you an example, right? So uh, I like to use like biblical references because they make sense. Mm -hmm. They're so rich. So you think about this. So the Israelites left Egypt, was going to the promised land. Mm -hmm. It was an 11-day journey that took 40 years. The reason why it took 40 years, not because the destination shift, but the mindset on why they leave and shift, right? Meaning we want to leave, but then once people realize what it takes to get where they need to go at, it's easier to go back where I come from, right? So what happens is we start to fight for the things that we want to get away from. So what happens in a culture right now is people want the information. People want to change their life. We got to we gotta applaud that. But now we also, as educators, we have to be patient and empathetic enough to say, yo, there's going to be backlash. And the reason why there's going to be backlash is because people are financially traumatized, mm -hmm. right? People have been scammed. People have been taught certain things about the banking system, about the school system, about what they're supposed to do with their money. You got to fight all that. As an educator, you got to have strong enough shoulders to fight that, lead with empathy and say, it's all good. I'm still here for you. So for me, the biggest thing is helping people overcome their own financial traumas so they can see that what we teaching is the gateway, that path to prosperity. Mm. Mm. That's a blessing. Great segue, because we're asking all of us guest speakers this one question. What is your path to prosperity? Um, information. That That is truly my path. Uh, devouring as much information as I can, mm. but then executing on it, whether it's right or wrong. I think that's one of the things that hinders a lot of people for sure is once you get the information, the execution becomes the hardest part because they want to execute. They want it to be right. Mm -hmm. For me, me executing is more important than me being right, because even if I execute and it's wrong, there's so much data inside of the loss to where now once I take the loss, I analyze the loss and now I can execute with more confidence. I can execute more powerful. I can execute now even quicker because now the loss has taught me so much. So for me, it's devouring as much information as I can and understanding that I don't know it all. Mm. That's my that's my building block. Even when I learn something new, I'm like, yup, I just I still don't know it all. Mm. Nope, I still don't know it. And so now just being able to consistently devour information, consistently be able to execute on the information, learn from the losses, and that's how you get longevity. 
perfect, bro. Wow, thank Appreciate you so you. much. Appreciate Everybody you. should know, but just in case they don't uh, know, let them know <laughs> where they could check you out. Yeah, man. Listen, man, she bought a Wall Street Trapper, man. We got a show come out every Tuesday, 7 o'clock Eastern Time Live. It's called Trapping Tuesdays on YouTube live look at that on the wall she looks like us in our network you can check us out on instagram wall underscore street underscore travel hey you heard it here first what did we did we do we did a thing yeah we did we, it right we did, we did a thing the mustard the gold oh five four three five <laughs> four and three and two hold wait <laughs> it's team sock passe no let's go doubt. two and one Sock Sock listen, passe. what's up, everybody, man? <laughs> welcome to Team Sock Passe. Let it roll, let it roll. Listen, let it roll. man, y'all welcome, man. And what we're doing, man, we're actually going to interview um, these guys and really try to find out what is the path to prosperity. Ooh. So what are you guys' paths to prosperity? Hey, we're all about giving access to entrepreneurs so we can help scale that business. Man, that's dope. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. What's your path to prosperity? I'm glad. Are you asking me? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm glad that you asked me this. Yeah. Um, no, but for real, uh, what's up, people? Uh, my name is Brandon Shot Me, and what I do is I help uh, creatives take their life uh, to the next uh, to the next level. So if you are anybody in the creative field, you're a content creator, you want to take your life to six, seven figures, I'm your dude. There it is. There it is. Yeah. How long you been doing it? Uh, I've been coached for about five years. Okay. Five years. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. Wow. Oh, y'all both, it's like both of y'all. It's like, damn, I don't know how, how, do, how are people doing this? Are they looking here? They ain't looking here? Yeah. Did yeah. you talk? Yeah, they go back and forth. Okay, yeah. bet. All right, yeah, yeah, pause. Let's do it. Rob, you got the so, next question. <laughs> yeah, so I'm trying to focus here. This okay. Dude, so, yeah. You got questions so, lined up? Yeah, yeah, I got questions. Lined I got up. questions. So now, you've been, you've been in the culture for a few years. Right, right. What's the difference from five years ago to now when it comes to like social media? Um, when it comes to social media, just different than social media in general. Right. Well, I think that I think social media has always been the same as far as staying consistent. If you can just stay consistent, I think it'll always work. Now, of course, there's algorithm changes like for people want more real format mm -hmm. and, you know, more video. But I think everything stays the same. As long as you focus on like just staying consistent, there mm -hmm. may be a change here too. Like maybe focus on photo more, maybe focus on video more. As long as you have your consistent as far as your messaging and the things that you teach, as long as they stay consistent, you will always stay in the game when it comes to social media. Because you did teach us as far as like, I remember taking that course, mm -hmm. you taught us how to change that, your your, your phone, yep. the camera phone, like the 4K image. Absolutely. It's straight in the settings. Yep. So now, do you think that's like cutting back as far as like a lot of these people that are out here with their regular phones and just catching content as a compared to like someone who has like a full yeah. production crew? Yeah. I feel like, I feel like that it just depends on like where you are. So if you're not creating content at all, mm. I think the first step is get started, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times people will people will stop and like, I don't have a crew, I don't have the fork, I don't have the thing. Like, no, go ahead and start first, get your message, get your story out there. And then once you start being consistent, that then you go into like, now I'm gonna start upgrading. Mm. Once people start seeing me and following, what's happening is you're actually stopping yourself from actually helping other people. If you wanna impact other people, but you're in the house like being scared, I don't wanna be on camera, I don't wanna do all these things. You're actually stopping yourself from impacting other people. Mm. So get started first, and then you can focus on now. I need a mic. Now I need a lighting. Now I need a camera crew. Gotcha. So it's levels. Okay. Your information is so powerful. You got even your mentees in the room today. And that's that's, for sure. that's what's up, man. Yeah. Let people know where they can find you for some more information to get Listen, tap man, in. For sure. So it's Brandon Shot Me everywhere, right? So if you go to Brandon Shot Me on Instagram, I'm there. If you go to Brandon Shot Me on MySpace, Christian Mingle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Christian. Oh, I appreciate y'all, man, team. Yeah, thank you, and we bro. out. Thank you. Back at the Path to Prosperity Conference with our brothers, our graduating class, the Acre Boys. What's up, fellas? Everything good. No doubt. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? No doubt. We already know what it is. We already know what it is. Hey, that episode is going crazy on a, on, on, on a podcast. Mm, fire. Sir, excellent, excellent interview. Excellent. No doubt. How y'all doing, man? Talk to the people. Everything is good, man. You know, it's a lot of times, you know, we love to come and get inspired by like events like this, right? Mm -hmm. Because you come in here and you get all kind of tools, all kind of school, skill sets, all kind of people that are doing things on a high level and force us to go ahead and push up and keep on doing the same thing. Yeah. So inspiration room, 100% for sure. Yeah. You talk about inspiration. Mm -hmm. First of all, people. 
Look at coordination. <laughs> <laughs> they got the polos. <laughs> nah, I'm Yo, killing it, bro. I'm killing it, bro. I'm killing it. Look, you, you, you were going to say something. Show y'all. We trying to be like y'all. What they call it? Brand awareness. That's what they say. There you go. There you go. Nah, but on a serious note, yeah, when you step yeah. into a room, man, we don't want to just come in and in, in, um, be just another body in the room. So that's what this, this brand and awareness is for. So it makes it easier for people to say, oh, Acre Boys. Whether they recognize us or not, somebody's gonna say, "What is that about?" So, branding is very important. You don't see a, uh, the owner of, of Nike shoe brand not representing who he is. True. Right? That's Maybe true. these days he's not, but in the beginning, you have to everywhere you go, people need to know who you are. They need to they need to say it clear, concise, and loud. Yeah. So, rep your brand. That's what we talk about. Yeah, yeah, rep your brand. You gotta rep your now brand. Let's talk about your brand, Acre Boys, man. You are out here changing lives, mm. and that episode you did with us was powerful. Uh, share with us a, a testimonial, man, of, of, of people changing lives, because we in there. Yeah, 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 for sure. So uh, one of the ones that comes to mind, one of many, and I'm proud to say that too, right? One of many is uh, a young lady who invested that came inside of our program. She purchased a property for $60,000. She's selling it for $200,000 mm. right now. And on top of that, it was only listed on the market for four days before a buyer came in. So that is definitely one of uh, one of our success stories. One of many, but she came in with no experiment, no real estate experience whatsoever. Followed the paths and the procedures that we already laid. Stay tuned, and now she's gonna make over six figures on her first deal, Man. land deal, as far as I can see. You got to give us a testimony. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> you know what happens, right? Sometimes when you hear these numbers, somebody making over hundred grand on their first deal, it go clean over a certain audience head, right? Mm -hmm. But that's for my people that can believe in that type of. Uh, Number right, because mm -hmm. right. everybody don't believe they can make they worthy of making a hundred sure. grand on, right. on one right. deal. So I got something for y'all non-believers ha who haven't reached that level yet, who's not on the path to prosperity. We doing also in our group buying for three hundred dollars for properties that's worth a modest thirty five hundred dollars. That may fit what you're trying to do. I tell you the key to that: don't buy one. Buy three or four. Now that buy for three turns into a buy for nine hundred, make twelve thousand. Wow. What, what uh what state is sizzling right now? Uh sizzling right now, mostly every state is really sizzling if you know how to contact that state and target it and do some things in them states. Half of America is up for grabs on sale and vacant forty seven percent to be exact. Um wherever you live at, we're in Georgia right now, every state is predominantly rural. We teach people how to invest in rural mm -hmm. markets. But if you want to buy land for less than a pair of Michael Jordan sneakers, you need to go to some tax auctions. And that's what we put in front of you as well. Online tax auctions. You got at least a hundred dollars. You spent a hundred dollars on food today. Yeah, yeah. We all about a half hour ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty much. About buck fifty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we all could invest in a piece of dirt. Only mm -hmm. thing is, you just didn't know you could get it for that cheap. Quick question: What's the the biggest challenge you guys face when buying land? Hmm. Uh, I, I would say the biggest challenge that we faced is uh, believing that we can do it in its inception, mm. coming from the beginning, right? Because mm. remember, when you come from certain environments and you don't have proof of concept of these things actually happen inside of your space, what happens is you start to second guess yourself. So even when somebody introduces new information that you see they've already had success in, what happens is it's a level of self-sabotage that mm. goes through your head, right? So now you're like, but can I do it? Yeah, I see you, but can I do it? But when you don't have those physical representations around you, a lot of times it's really, really hard to see what you can do internally, but you just don't have those representations around you to even give you that kind of forefront, that confidence to go ahead and do it. That's our biggest challenge, I think, in the beginning. Up, yeah. For people who are listening right now, when they watch this, this quick interview and they want to tap into your community, Talk about the success that you guys are having with your community right now. Because you're building it and it's building quick. Mm -hmm. I think um, um, success, we even have to take a seat back to it sometimes because it's happening yeah. really, really yeah. fast. Our, uh, our program is on the market now, going into its first year. Um, the success stories, the testimonials, we call them a test. I mean, because they've been through a test, they survived the test, they got a result from it. So the testimonials are starting to come out left and right. Super proud of our group, the Land and Legacy Group. If you want to come into our group, into our program, we with our good brothers, Team Side by Say. Yes, sir. The link will be in their bio. Yeah. Make sure you use their link, come through that channel. This is what we do for each other. These is our brothers. We all connected. This is our graduating class, and we're gonna treat it like that and move as a unit. 
Wow, that's powerful. for sure. Right, right, right. Now, that's we're powerful. asking all of the speakers. I'll let you ask it, Rob. Yeah. yeah, we're asking all the speakers. What is your or path? Or non-speakers. Oh, or non-speakers. What is your path to prosperity? Well, you go first. My path to prosperity is to uh, develop generational land by land ownership and land flipping. That's my path to prosperity. Because I understand that most people do not understand, especially in today's market or even ever, they don't understand how you could take a piece of raw, rural, vacant land, mm -hmm. turn around and purchase it for 20 to 30 percent on a dollar and flip it around for full market value, especially in those markets, because this is out in what people will call the country. Right. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times these things are put to the side because people don't understand these markets. But we made the markets easily understandable. And now we can go ahead and get that result. And that's the path of prosperity for me. Perfect. And I say my path to prosperity, and I think I speak for both of us on this, is um, we're going to start to develop these land pieces because we run into so much land. And what you're standing on now, we're inside of the W Hotel. The W Hotel at one point was a piece of vacant land. So we're going to go and target these vacant lands, develop our own space, start holding our own conferences all throughout the countries in some of the, the best cities that we can put them in. And uh, we'll grow that way. Hey, Damn. you got to end this interview with your tagline, please. Yeah. Listen, y'all know the tagline, y'all. Invest in dirt. It's a clean way to make money. <laughs> Let's go, y'all. <laughs> Back to the path to prosperity with our brother Pushman Mitch. What's going on, bro? What's the deal? What's, What's the, the deal? deal hey, man, it's a pleasure. We're going to start this question off with, I know you're not speaking today, but definitely got to know what your path to prosperity is. All right, so I got the number one rental car business in ATL. Um, fastest growing uh, online coaching program for entrepreneurship. Um, so that's pretty much what I do, man. I'm just trying to be of service, trying to be of impact of everybody that come from where I come from and be a mirror for those people. Mm. Wow, that's, that's interesting. Up, man. Your, your story is interesting, man. Oh, like, yeah. I've been watching you for like, you know, a good a few years. <laughs> okay, okay. Because <laughs> you out here in the A doing your thing, man. I appreciate you that. You started out with Turo and um, Airbnb space as well. Yes, indeed. Like, like, what are some of the challenges right now, like back then from like Turo to now? Like, what do you oh, think? Because it's so saturated or? No, I think saturation is a myth. But um, mm. what I will say is, is people that are not going to be in the industry long that are coming in and they're disrupting the normal patterns, which is like people coming in and because they're not ready to do it at a high level, they got cars that are supposed to be rented out for higher, for lower. And all that does is that makes us have to be more strategic on our approach. But saturation, that's never going to be an issue. It's always going to people be people that come and go. But the same, it's the same. The money's the same, uh, but you just got to approach it differently. Mm. Okay. Talk to great, us about great. your community. How many people are you influencing and, and helping change lives right now? That's crazy. Man, I got over 300,000 followers across platforms. Uh, so as far as my community, man, uh, it's huge. It's very vast. I feel like I tell people I'm a J-list celebrity. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Yeah. So now, quick question with, uh, you know, with the Uber industry. Yeah. Yeah, we're going, like, we're in a, we went from tech to, well, info industry right now. Okay. The info information and we're, we're like rolling all of that into a lot of people who want to get into Uber and they, you know, they want to get into the Turo and yeah. what is, what's one nugget you can give these people? That's, mm. that's a great question to ask. Thank you, thank you. All right. So me, I came from the Uber grind, so I respect Uber crazy. Mm -hmm. um, that was my, one of my first investors. So Uber and Lyft, I used to be a person who drove 16 hours a day, seven days a week until I got my footing. So two years. Um, so I encourage people that are trying to get into doing like the ride sharing mm -hmm. to just um, understand the patterns of like people who are traveling. You are in the traveling business. You got to make sure that you up early 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. and um, just work until they kick you off. If you really about that life, mm -hmm. if you do that, you're going to get to platinum status. And when you get the platinum status, they give you bonuses for trips. So a lot of people don't understand how I used to make twenty hundred dollars a week. It was because I was platinum status on both apps. So on, <laughs> on Uber and mm -hmm. Lyft, I was platinum. So I would get bonuses per week for each of them for doing a certain amount of trips. Mm -hmm. So that's how you you start off with as far as Uber is concerned. Now, then once you make enough pocket money, you go ahead and get in a rental car game, mm -hmm. right? And you go get you a couple Ford Fusions, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And you rent them out to Uber drivers who are going to be using to pay bills. Right. So that means that they have an incentive to keep the car for longer. Mm -hmm. So I rent them out by the week, not by the day. And then you just continue to grow as you, you know, scale as you kind of get experience. Right. And that's what I would encourage them to do. And then you'll be able to make up to $1,800 a month per car and then you ain't got to drive no more. 
So True. until then, you know, that's that's your blueprint. Start off True. like that and True. get to the chicken. There's Dang. a lot of traffic in Atlanta, too. Yes, indeed. You got a lot of patience if you're doing that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's not, you know, it's not nothing easy. passive. I don't teach passive income. I don't right. recommend it. Right. For anybody that ain't got seven figures, I don't recommend passive income. I recommend active income. Mm-hmm. You know yeah, what I mean? You can get passive after you get some some millions in the bank. Hey, let's True. add to that. Uh, let them know where they can find you. Find me on the gram, TikTok, YouTube, Pushman Mitch. And I got a podcast called No Fluff the Podcast on YouTube. Go check that out as well. There it is. And we're here with these two great entrepreneurs. Let's talk business. Y'all, please introduce yourselves. Uh, my name is Charles McMillan, uh, owner of Investment uh, Trade, I mean, Team Investment Group. And I've uh, been in the business for over 36 years. Wow. And uh, just here to sp- spread our knowledge and wealth of information. Uh, wonderful event. And just here with my daughter and my um, co owner in, in the company. Yeah. Oh, and uh, something that's, okay. you know, actually perpetuating generational wealth. Well, here it is, me and her. Definitely. Okay. I'm the second generation realtor. I assist my dad with various acquisitions. Our acquisitions are anywhere from two to eight million. Um, we're based in California and looking to spread the word from state to state. Wow. Oh, wow. So yeah. let's talk about generational wealth yes. and how important it is. It is. Yeah. So for me, generational wealth is important for me because it's able, we're able to bridge the gap, help our community and really spread the word when it comes to real estate investing. What about you, Dad? Absolutely. Um, this is my product right here. So, basically, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm inspired to uh, actually spread the wealth, the wealth of knowledge that I have for me and my daughter and actually uh, let people know what transition and succession looks like. So mm-hmm. we don't have that in our community. And I'm here from, I guess you got to come the old head. The, the old head is going to let you know, the new generation know how that succession looks like. And what we're gonna do with it. Okay, great. Uh, so I, I know he's 36 years. Yes. That's impressive. Yes. And I know it's not a lot of us in the real estate game. Well, back then, there weren't a lot of us. Oh, no. It's the opposite. Oh, it was nobody. Oh. Oh. Are we good? Are we good? Okay. There you go. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dad. You know how we do it? Are we good on this one? Okay, okay cool. So, yeah. So, 36 years. That's that's impressive. Um, and I, I commend you on that. So what's the difference between back then and now as far as like with real estate? Speed of information. Mm. Back then, uh, we had this thing called a modem and, you know, you know, we didn't get the information now. It's light speed. So for that transition from where we were to where we are now, I can help people, you know, put gasoline on that fire to get them from zero to 10, 15 million dollars. And it's not that not that difficult anymore. And that's what I love about uh, where we are now as a community. I think social media definitely does play mm. a part, right? So being on Instagram, being able to kind of get the word out about generational wealth and real estate and how you make an impact. So for me, as a millennial, I think it's important to have that information readily available in comparison to him. You know, he had the computer, the box computers and stuff like that. Yeah. So information is just a lot. And then also for me to actually be able to free uh, not only my generation, but the generation before me and after me so it's been my blessing nice, nice. so now you guys said a magical number between two to eight million in yes, sales correct. can you guys talk about that because that's like a, a a nice number right there well a flavor of um of assets and things that we have i'll go ahead and Absolutely. let you take that so what we do hmm. uh we uh, have investors that come in with us we have a uh, capital where we can go ahead and, and acquire those properties with uh, the bank, we have a personal relationship with some of the major uh, banks in America, and they're willing to lend us up to $100 million. So we have that capacity. Wow. wow um, that's amazing. So we're asking Congrats. everybody, I know you guys didn't speak today, but we're asking everybody that we interviewed, what's, what's your path to prosperity? So I'm asking each and one of you guys, what is your path to prosperity? Whoever can take it first. Yeah. <laughs> um, the key to and the path of my prosperity is my family. Uh, this is my wealth right here. Mm. Uh, without uh, family and knowing exactly what my why was, I wouldn't be laser focused as I was. So my wealth is standing right next to me. Aww. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> wow. I guess my path to prosperity is a future generation. Although I'm, I don't have a family right now, but just being able to set the tone for that mm-hmm. and being able to understand and build my wealth as I'm doing right now so that they'll be able to have it for the future generation. So that's my path to prosperity. Powerful. And my dad being able to, even though he's giving me everything, but <laughs> being able to help him in as many ways as I can. Beautiful. And 
one more question. How did how did you find about find out about Path to uh, Prosperity? Uh, you know what? Um, it was my daughter that uh, basically let me know, and she wanted to get around like minded individuals and people in our community that look like us. And so I said, yeah, let's go ahead and, and ex, you know, explore that. And last year, and I like the vibe. I like the people, man. I, you know, we have a small tribe, but we want our tribe to grow bigger and to protect her and our people like us. We need more like minded individuals. So that's why I'm here to make sure when I'm not here anymore, there'll be people there to love, protect and honor her as well. Beautiful, beautiful. Please let people know where they can find you to get more information. Yeah, more information. Please follow us on Instagram, um, TIGinvestments.com. We also, too, have a website, uh, well, TIGassets.com, and Instagram um, at TIG Investments. So. Hey. So I'm about to say, what's up, y'all? We're back at the Path to Prosperity Conference with none the other, Ms. Donnie Wingers. How you doing? I'm amazing. How are you? Good. Doing terrific. Yes. Let the people know what you just spoke about because you just tore down that stage. Yes, you did. Uh, I just talked about the path to prosperity, literally about um, life being whatever you want. Like you have options. And the reason that most people don't get what they want is because they aren't taking advantage of their options. Like, you know, what's available. You just don't ask for it. So start asking for the things that you want. Powerful. You want the money, the house, the car, the relationship, the health. Like, just start asking the questions. Put it out there. Powerful, powerful, powerful. So. I just want to say we commend you on what you've been doing for the culture. Thank you. Definitely been watching you from from years ago. But um, also, what are some of the challenges now that you have a new platform, a podcast? Like, what are some of the challenges that you faced coming into this new, you know, social media podcast kind of platform? Um, if I could think about real challenges that I'm having right now, it's probably going to be in like staffing and team and training. Uh, just, you know, making sure that everybody is in alignment with the vision and making sure that everybody is skilled and qualified to operate in the roles that we're currently placing them in. And we need to hire more people. So say, hey, <laughs> <laughs> what's one of the key things that you feel that people are hesitant on fulfilling their path to prosperity? Mm, they're second guessing themselves. Just, you know what? Um, people who don't make a move are usually very much in their head. They're overthinking. They're overthinking what the possible outcome is. They're overthinking things that hadn't even happened yet. Like what happens if this doesn't work? What happens if people judge me? What happens if I don't get support? And overthinking is what's causing the issue and, and what's causing people from being uh, able to move forward. Perfect. So what are some of the questions that you ask yourself if you if it happens that you do overthink yourself, you know, <laughs> on certain things? Like, what are some of the questions or some of the like, do you have any kind of routine that you go? So through? here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of 10, people are overthinking because they're worried about what other people think. Right. People are like not making a move because they're afraid to be judged. Right. They don't want to be uh, criticized by people that they know. And here's my key. Mm -hmm. I want you to make a list of the people who you are afraid of being judged by. If you don't know their names, they don't matter, number mm -hmm. one. And then number two, for the people who you do not do know, I want you to draw a hyphen and write out what have they done that's so great, so challenging? What have they expressed so much bravery in that makes them qualified to judge you? And if it comes up empty, they don't matter either. The people who are qualified to judge you won't judge you in a harsh or negative way. They're going to be in support because they understand what the journey to success looks like. Mm, powerful. So do you think social media has a lot to do with that? People like the judgment? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's the way that we grew up, mm -hmm. the beliefs that our teachers, our parents, our friends have put in them, uh, the people who we're connected to. Like if my best friends, none of them believe in themselves, then it's going to be difficult for me to find a source of belief for myself, too. Mm -hmm. So it starts there. But then we start finding our icons and our influencers online um, and we're measuring ourselves against what they're doing. And it doesn't seem to be happening as quickly or they're not showing the the truth is they're not showing the full journey. And so for them, it looks overnight, but it was really 10 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think social media has a lot to do with it for sure. Wow. So yes. social proof for transparency and Hasi, which one do you enjoy? I love them all. <laughs> Great question. Okay, let's talk about let's talk about the new one, your new baby, Hot Seat. So I very was just new a dynamic. On okay. Hot Seat. Mm -hmm. um, I played the bad guy in a current episode of Hot Seat, but mm -hmm. that's not the direction um, that I'm currently in. We're focused on Social Proof Podcast. Okay. And the Full Transparency Podcast. 
Awesome. Well, awesome. We'll, everybody's going to continue to check it in. We're asking everybody, what is your path to prosperity? So what is your path to prosperity? Uh, I talked about it on stage today. So mm -hmm. when you're literally like, I don't want to give you the one liner fluff answer. Literally, the path of prosperity includes asset and income generation, meaning a way that we make money. And then two is asset and income diversification, meaning a way that we diversify how we make money. Mm -hmm. And then three, asset and income preservation, meaning we protect and we give our money instructions for what it does in this lifetime and beyond. Perfect. Perfect. Wow. Nice. Let people know where they can find you to tap in with you and coach. Yes. You. Find me <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Donnie Wiggins underscore D O N N I Wiggins W I G G I N S underscore. You can find me there. You can also text me 404 737 4767. Hey, you heard wow. it here first. Thank Team Top I say, we out. We out. All right. Ah.